Welcome to Nerdy Show, a weekly podcast dedicated to every facet of nerddom, from comics and video games to science and technology. If it's geeky, we've got it covered. Hi, I'm Cap. Hey, I'm Brandon. I'm Boar. And I'm Jess. It's good to be back, guys. Boy, you sure had fun while I was gone. Eh, it's all right. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we learned some interesting things. I mean, Tony you know, had the best we, we know what it's like to be, well, at least I know what it's like to be in your seat and uh, do the things that you got to do to get things done. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we learned the horrible conditions in which you operate, such as yeah. your keyboard where some of the keys don't work and that's inexplicable. That was news to me. Quite and frankly. I, I think <laughs> I think we vowed to fix it too. But well, there's we a keyboard. Have, we're too there lazy. A, there's a keyboard on the shelf behind him. We could have just switched it out with, and that yeah. one works. Yeah, <laughs> <Just> well, literally. <laughs> in case you're just tuning in, um, I went on a nearly three week journey that took me from San Diego Comic Con to Los Angeles to Camp Fan Gamer out in Tucson, Arizona, and then uh, in a roundabout way, eventually back to Orlando. Um, and Jess was there with me for San Diego Comic Con, and we're really That's excited right. to hear about that. But uh, I'm told that we have to go through the the boring stuff that Brandon and I have been up to first. Uh, yeah, and it's we'll, very boring. We'll, but we'll do it. We'll just you know we'll we'll gotta take our medicine first. So what painfully boring, <laughs> awful bullshit have you two jackasses been up to? Um, I've been playing some worthless games. No, I. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've played a lot of games recently just to get them out of the way. Uh, Dex is one that you you got for me, technically, <laughs> with a promo code. But uh, Dex which is a is, sequel to Gex, obviously. Yes, um, his his sister. I was Dex. I was picturing a card game until you. No, it's basically it's like the side scrolling cyberpunk action RPG game that looks almost like it's a Super Nintendo game. Yeah, and feels now, like I'm it. actually really excited for this. I I haven't had a chance to play well, it yet. It's got its ups and downs, man. Well, tell me about Dex. Well, okay. Basically, it feels like Shadowrun for Super Nintendo. That's not a bad thing. Which is great. Um, But the the problem with the game is that it's only like 10 hours, even with all the side quests. That's actually a good thing for me. Well, yeah. You (laughs) can can handle walking out. You play the main story. You can do it in a couple hours. But it's essentially a simplified version of the new Deus Ex franchise. That's how it seems to me, where you go around a city... And you have different missions, and you can augment your character in different ways, and there's different outcomes. That's It's essentially the same thing as Deus Ex, just kind of streamed down. And the, the thing where it kind of fails is the dialogue is is worse than B-movie dialogue sometimes. Oh. There, some of the characters will tell jokes or try to move the story along, and you're, you kind of cringe at, at that. You're like, oh, did he say that? That's not funny or clever. But the gameplay is really good, and... The way that I played the game, because you can basically, you can stealth most of the game, you can hack things, um, you can just punch things to death or or use guns, and you can mod your character uh, with augments to to basically do whatever you want. So I would hack people's brains and kind of stun them, and then while they were stunned, punch them in the face until they were dead. So that's how I played the entire game without even using guns. So so in that aspect, the the game is really fun, and it's a solid gameplay. Uh, the only thing that, yeah, like I said, didn't like was the the talking <laughs> and the the shortness hmm. of the game. Hmm. It's fun. Is it worth how much money it is? I don't know. How much money is it? I actually don't know because I got I got it for free. You got a press copy. If it's twenty dollars, I would say like ten dollars. So if it's ten dollars, go for it. Okay. Yeah. The the other thing that I got that was really good uh, was Hyperlight Drifter finally came out. And I think that was twenty dollars. So that that game um, was made by Heart Machine Studios. It's an indie two D action role playing game that's done in an eight bit and sixteen bit uh, style, the art style and the music. Even it's done by Chip Tunes artist named Disaster Piece. I don't know if you've I've heard, heard of Disaster. Yeah, he did yeah. like Fez. Cool. Uh, so the music's wow. really great. Yeah, no, the the game the the creator says that it plays like Legend of Zelda and Diablo. Yeah, and he's kind of right. Um, you, you know, enemies, what? That's, enemies, a, that's a really weird combo. It's, it's because there's just like sometimes there's swarms of enemies and you're just like hacking and slashing them. But at the same time, you're exploring the environment and looking for different pieces of like the Triforce essentially in Zelda and walking around and exploring on your own and going wherever you want. Is it like a top, top down? down? Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. So it's like that in, in that respect. But it's more like Zelda in the way that you crawl you travel the around, and like the or... screen will move to another screen when you when you hit the edges and stuff. So like that. it's not like really a dungeon crawler. It's no, more like so a... I was confused when he said that uh, okay. because, but yeah, I don't I don't know why he said it's more like that. But probably the, just because of the viewpoint. I I guess okay. it, it kind of looks like Diablo style. 
the but just like what most the hell indie, is happening i just yeah it's I was, Cap's putting on something interesting i was sort of like oh jesus fuck. listening to you and caps over there doing i have i have no idea what's going i was on. gonna say one of the developers um influences for this game and i definitely see it after reading reading his influence you can really just ignore that, that? yeah i'm ignoring it nausicaa <laughs> okay. nausicaa valley of the wind and you can definitely tell right off the bat that it's influenced by by a miyazaki film um other than that uh the game's other influence is heart disease so, the all right, for, for the little, little, yeah, yeah, because the, the main developer has a very bad heart disease or heart problem that he's been he's working with for years, and the main character in the game does too. All at right, for, for those way. at home uh, <laughs> who are who are listening and not watching the video portion of this podcast, which I recommend you should watch the video <laughs> portion of it if it. you're listening to this, because uh, Cap looks like a serial killer or something right now who is just. Cut the face off of some sort of a uh, like a clown, and then is now wearing it. Uh... Or is it like a clown cat? I feel like it's a cat's bad makeup for the Broadway. Production. Is that a face mask? It's that you use to like you put on before you go to sleep, but you just drew over it and are wearing it. Kinda it kind of looks like that. Only it was inspired by oh like my God. Five Nights at Freddy's. He's holding Freddy's, up a package or... that has a bunch of Japanese on it, and it's called Pure Smile, Will You Be a Cat? And it's got a cat face on it. And I guess... And, and Cap will be a cat. I he, will he be. That. I will be a cat. Yeah. Now the you... question remains, what will you be, Brandon and Boar? Oh, God. What, what will you be? Are you I am kidding now me? So why don't you afraid. pass these around here and oh, find God. out what kind of collagen mask, novelty oh, collagen shit. mask, <laughs> <laughs> that you will be. Oh, shit. Does Hold Jess on. have one, too? Uh, unfortunately, no. due, to, due to some uh, terrible circumstance, Jess does not have one of these. Um, there you go, Bor. I already picked okay. mine, and, and you're going right. to hate I did that try, I try to find one, though. I heck? found. I saw these in Japan as well. They had, like... <laughs> uh, anyway, I won't ruin a surprise if you guys are getting some of the ones I was going to list think I'm, uh, do I, Is this wet? So, uh, yeah, it's very, oh, it's very moist, and, and, and it smells like coconut or something. All right, so, I, have, I have no idea what so this I'm, one I'm is, but I'm going to do it. Why is it slimy? With a heart on my cheek and a fish in my mouth. Well, um, no, seriously, mine's slimy. Is that normal? Yeah, no, that's normal. Look at my fingers. They're I all... don't want to be slimy all episode. <laughs> it's, it's just your face that's slimy. What the hell? <laughs> This is oh, and I picked the perfect one no, for this. Oh too. God, what? Oh, when I was in Los this Angeles, is disgusting. I been like Jello. <laughs> I have to put this on my face. <laughs> Should I take my glasses off? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I took mine off to put it on. It's bullshit. Um, no, it's great. It's awesome. Um, when I, 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 I dropped on the rug. <laughs> down the road. It's, covered. it's covered in dirt. <laughs> when I was in uh, Los Angeles, I, I hung out for an afternoon with uh, Alexis, aka Genki Mistress, Nerdy Show fan on the forums, uh, and we went to Little Tokyo, ate some awesome ramen, and hit a bunch of stores where I found a bunch of weird Shinchan food items and also these masks. And uh, Brandon, I feel Bohr, like I'm gonna, I, I'm, this is really I, I think hard I'm gonna to break unfold. it. Just yeah. trying to get it. <laughs> How did you undo your so fast? Uh, well, with my fingernails. Mine's mostly. covered in lint. I don't think it's a matter of fingernails. It's good. It's, it's like a like mud bath thing equivalent. Rips it's so easily. It's a it's a collagen it's mask. Like a, it's not uh, collagen. This is like a fucking wet nap. It, it will. It has... This is worse. It feels like this was in someone's mouth for two hours and they <laughs> spat it out. It's covered in fucking saliva. Oh god, mine's covered in uh, hair and fucking cat litter. Now, Bor, I've, I've seen what which one Brandon picked because I brought several for you to choose from. Uh, what which one did you pick? Well, you're you're gonna just have to find out in in a minute okay. when I when I okay. get. Okay. Which is there well, a front? Is there a front? In the meantime, while you, while you're sorting that out, Bor, why don't you tell me about uh, what you've been up to? Oh God! How can I tell you about anything <laughs> when I have this sticky <laughs> Kat, mess in my hands? Can you take my, my glasses hands? off for me? Yeah, okay. Oh God! Just pull them off. Wait, be careful. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So I need to shower after this. Hold on. <laughs> Oh, yeah. it was Brandon. He's uh. He's... It's so fucking cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Now, now these are great. Are you because, a what the hell is that? <laughs> I have right, no I'm skin. Gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sidle no off camera for a second. The, the, the pure smile art masks. Um, they, they, they market to everyone, genuinely everyone, <laughs> and and they, there's something for everybody. You can be a cat. You, you can be a, a beautiful napkins? Grecian woman. You can be. Uh, what am I? You have to smush it to your face. Well, Brandon, I think you might be a legally distinct from a a Titan from Attack on Titan. You have a complete flesh face. <laughs> can you make this work? Is it is it on? You, no, it's not. It's you gotta you gotta push it up a little bit. Did I put mine on backwards? <laughs> I don't know if there was a backwards. <laughs> okay. And, and Boar is a beautiful sobbing kappa with lipstick on his bill. Here, here's the 
That is, of course, the, the water. It won't stick to my mustache and my deity. beard. I'm supposed to be this. <laughs> oh, God, it's slimy. It's like I really have no skin. Is it on yet? Yeah, it's more or less on. What you do I need to fix? What do I need look, to fix? I don't you think, look terrifying. Can I just say that I don't think these were made for people with beards? I'm <laughs> Satan! Well, Japanese people don't have beards it, unless it, they're it, Kung Fu masters. It, it literally will not stick to the bottom part of my face. <laughs> I think my hat is mostly... You look like a melting sad clown. <laughs> I feel like one. I feel I like a sad open. melting clown. Does, I can't see what mine looks like. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> well, that's why I, you'll have to watch the uh, YouTube video and contribute how do we get to our the, views. How do you get the goo off see of your hand? See this chair next to you? You wipe it. <laughs> Oh, well, you're supposed to have webbed sure. fingers, Bor, so maybe that just contributes to that. I mean, yeah, yeah if you were a like, kappa, you'd be like, ooh, this feels yeah. lovely. This Am feels I going like to have a rash skin. at work tomorrow? No, you're going to have beautiful, silky, collagen-infused sin. Is this skin. aloe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have collagen-infused sin, which is what it looks like, because I'm assuming I just look like I have no skin Okay, on. now I'm confused. Is it a beauty yep. product, yeah, or yeah. or is it... What? what? What is this? It, I don't know. It, it is a beauty product. It's a novelty. It's a beauty product that's also a novelty. It's I apologize novelty to people at product. home who only are listening to the audio. A horrible thing is happening. You should watch the YouTube video. We're going to be talking about a lot of great stuff this episode. We're going to be talking about uh, some sci-tech, some, some pop culture, some movies and television. But we're also going to be wearing these on our face. For I guess oh, as you long wrap as you it can, underneath. As long as you can tolerate it. Yeah, um, <laughs> it won't stick to me. You look like you're melting. How long is it supposed to stay on? Uh, it's, it's supposed to be on for 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> Oh, God, it's getting in my mouth. Can I talk about the last thing I was going to talk about before this horrible shit hit the fan? <laughs> yeah, it's hard do. to speak, so we're going to be slurring a bit now. <laughs> um, the last thing that I was going to talk about, even though I don't care anymore, for some reason, um, is Neverwinter. It came out for PS4. The MMORPG. Like Neverwinter Nights? Well, no, it's just called it's, Neverwinter. It's the same game that came out like... It came out three years ago. Three years ago, but, and I'm, I was sick of it three years but ago. But it came out on Xbox One last year, and it just came out on PS4 this year for free, and... It came with all the expansions and stuff, so it's it's really fun because it's free. And here's the here's the thing that I'm excited about, even though it doesn't matter. If you don't have, you know how you need like PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live to play anything online now. Sure. Yeah, Neverwinter they made it so you don't need a PlayStation Plus account. You can just play it without any sort of account and just for free forever. So that way you can purchase lots of astral diamonds. Yes. What? Okay. Uh, there's in-game currency. There's microtransactions that are completely unnecessary. Because Astral Diamonds, which are like currency you can buy and trade for everything that's awesome, mostly just um, aesthetic stuff, though. Well, actually, no, not aesthetic stuff, too. You earn so much later on just from doing random dungeons and stuff that you n you will never need to buy. And you earn thousands upon thousands yeah. more. So. But, but I'm uh, just saying, right I, I, now it's fun. I got a horse, and I, it's fun. And I'm, I'm going, you can go to Icewind Dale later. You can go to, like, seven other places. In, in that world. I don't know if you can go to Baldur's Gate. I have a couple level 40s already. So. I like watching Jess watching our faces. <laughs> yeah, it's very... Yeah, I, I'm just, I, I just keep expecting Brandon to just, like, roar. Like, Jess, did like, you why put on is this too? Titan talking? This doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, is this, this, doesn't, this isn't in the show. This looks like a boar. You should have worn this. This looks what? like this looks like a bunny. Do you see the image? It looks like a bunny. Yeah, what is the image? Hold up the image. I'll hold, I, you tell me. Can you see that? Oh, that's the Attack on Titan guy. That is not. Yeah. I just watched that show again. This is nothing from Attack on Titan. This is a it dead bunny. Well, they probably couldn't legally make it the Attack on Titan. It's a bunny. There's a Titan nose. There's a bunny nose right there. That's, and then some loppy ears on the side. That's a dead fucking bunny with no skin. I think it's just a noseless, My favorite. I don't know if you can see the person. images of the, the Asian dude with the anime hair putting it on. He's having a really good time. And then at the yeah. end, he looks really horrified. Like in that scene from The Mask where he puts the mask on and you can't take it off again and it takes over. Mm. That's a... Uh... I kind of feel like that right yeah. now. Yeah. Somebody stop me! That's what I've been doing, guys. What have you been up to doing? <laughs> oh, God, it's getting in my mouth. <laughs> hey, what does this smell? It's like, I don't know, coconuts or something. I'm allergic to coconuts! No, you're not. I'm not, I'm not we're about to find out. <laughs> oh, God. I, 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 need I like that you didn't tell us if there's any, like, allergies in here. getting caught in the rain. I'm not legally obligated there, to do nothing. Is there gluten in this? You like making love <laughs> at midnight, Brandon. That's true. In the dunes of the Cape. All right, I, I'm gonna... <laughs> I can't drink... How am I supposed to drink my drink? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, oh, I've got a tiny little straw, so I think I think I can use my tiny little straw. Can you straw. get me a oh, tiny God. straw? Oh, uh, God. Uh, no, I can't. <laughs> I'm getting it in my fucking mouth. Oh, I can use my pen as a straw if I take out the ink. <laughs> you can also use it to re re relieve abdominal pressure if, you know, mm. someone's getting bloated and you just stab it in their abdomen. 
That's probably good tactic. Mmm, how's that taste? Accented by the coconut, I assume. Yeah, extra extra collagen. Yeah, it tastes, it tastes awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, well, how about you, Boar? You, uh... Oh, oh I, I went maskless because I couldn't take that anymore. That was, you coward! That was some sort of you weird coward. slimy torture. You know what? I'm and, to, and I'm the killer to like part, it. the killer part for me was that I couldn't barely talk. And this is a podcast, so <laughs> How's your I figured skin? taking it off. Uh, it feels slimy <laughs> and unnecessarily slimy. Does it feel like a thousand <laughs> snails? Do you feel like you've been laying outside after it's rained and just snails have been crawling over your face over and over? Because it feels like that. Yeah. Or I'm in a really cold vagina. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a giant vagina just not attached to a body sitting outside, and it's really cold out. And I was like, I'll put my head in there, like and a, then I take my head out. Like and a whale, a whale's vagina, maybe a beached whale on the Arctic. Yeah, shores. there's a dead oh. whale. It just died. Its insides are cold, and it's still slimy. That's what I put my head in. No. So then it probably does it smell like that too? Because I walked no. by a beached whale the other day and it was not it was not not a good smell. No. I don't no, think you'd want to put your face in that. It kind of smells like bubble gum or something. Maybe like a, a whale that beached itself because it got too drunk on pina coladas. That's what it smells like. It's starting to smell like vomit, but that could just be me <laughs> wanting to throw up. <laughs> so sorry to interrupt you. What were you saying for about life in general? <laughs> life in genital. <laughs> So uh, I started uh, watching and finished, actually, since it doesn't take that long, watching uh, Man in the High Castle. Woo! And uh, yeah, now I know what you were talking about all those times. And good show. It's a really good show. Um, I, is there some sort of weird sci-fi element to it? It seems, mm-hmm. it seems like there is, and, and they just haven't gotten into it Are you it kidding? Yet. I saw the last episode, so I mean, I could ruin it for you. I did too. Oh wait, then yeah, there is. I said I finished it. So oh yeah, there's yeah. totes. Oh, well, then... and 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 lucky for you guys, Jess and I have a lot to say on the matter because we spoke to the entire cast of the show. What? Oh good. <laughs> even Shang Tsung. Yes, even Shang Tsung. Oh shit, Shang, Give me, your soul Shang is Sung. mine. <laughs> oh yeah, Shang Tsung was in it. Get over here. Oh wait. Well, he can do that too. Oh yeah, can he? Because he can change into anybody. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> he forgot about his only deal. <laughs> he, he takes people's souls and he goes, "Your soul." I remember the movie, guys. He didn't transform in the movie, except uh, into Luke Kang's brother. And also, I watched uh, Stranger Things, which I loved, and and which came out just before I left. Everyone's been telling me I have to check it out, uh, but I haven't yet because I just got back. And Jess, you saw it too, right? I did, and Cap, I think you need to check it out. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know how much... If Do you want to wait to talk about it, Cap? Um, I mean, you, well, why don't you pitch it to, uh, to anybody who, who's like me hasn't seen it yet? Okay, uh, it's based in the 80s, and most things when they say they're based in the 80s it's like there's an 80s explosion that happened and you know like an unrealistic portrayal of the time period it's right too intense. and this is like somebody time traveled back to the 80s with hd cameras and filmed this entire filmed series it realistic like donnie darko uh yeah it's yeah it's more 80 it feels more 80s than that well donnie darko was 89 i think so that okay that's too contributing factor that's too yeah that's too, it was too close to 90 i guess but uh <laughs> But yeah, it's such a good, such a good. So it's series. a horror show, right? Kind yeah. of Stephen there's, Kingy. Kind there's of? like mm-hmm. horror sci-fi elements to it. It's like if you took us a, a Steven Spielberg show or movie, and then a Stephen King movie or show or whatever, and combined them and then made them actually good. That's what that's this is. that's really <laughs> accurate, yeah. actually. No, us uh, uh, Stephen King, Steven Spielberg, and Guillermo del Toro all said they really love this show, huh. and it's based on all their stuff. Not right. all their stuff, but some. There's cool. some influences. Uh, Guillermo del Toro's. Um, Silent Hills. It's a little bit Goonies, too. They mm-hmm. said there were parts of the show they based off Silent Hills. Silent Comple- Hills. They said that was one of their inspirations for part so of it. So PT, then. Mm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's specific and awesome. It is. Um, and, and the only other thing that I've been doing lately is having sort of an identity crisis when it comes to uh, my persona in World of Warcraft. Oh. Because... As I Mm -hmm. talked about last time, they put through a lot of changes, so like everybody's character now plays differently than it used to, and I've been trying to figure out what I want to play for the next expansion, and and that's actually a really difficult choice since I have like five level one hundred characters, and now I have to narrow it down to like when is enough enough for you? When are you going to be like it's time to put this to rest? No, time to put Warcraft to bed. Never. Time to go nighty night, Mister <laughs> Mister Orc Ogre, whatever you are, and little blue magic elf guy. 
<laughs> Time to go to bed. <laughs> little, little stone goblin. <laughs> Big fat panda man. <laughs> It's dripping in my mouth. Don't make me laugh. It's made way funnier by the fact that you're wearing that on your face. You, you seem like some sort of an undead old man. Let me tell you something. Oh. You shouldn't be playing them nerve video Stop. games anymore. No, put, no. put them down. Oh, God. Hold on. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what's been going on with me. Uh, how about you guys? Oh, well, oh, shit. Um, this is uh, Jess and I's second Comic-Con together. I've been doing it for a few years. It's um, getting consistently more absurd and less about comic books. But uh, boy, it's like E3, where it's getting more commercialized and less about the actual like why it started and what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, and Comic Con was already there a few years ago when mm -hmm. I went the first time. But it's just it's getting more and more extreme. And it's it's fine. It's a, it's a fun it's a fun thing to do. Um, and uh, she's just what would you say that the your favorite part of what we did was? Ah. Uh... Honestly, I have to say that the Ash versus Evil Dead panel was probably my favorite moment. Uh, but the Band in the High Castle uh, little like walkthrough experience was probably a very close second. But what's, okay, um, so I want to hear about both those things because those are both two things I didn't do. That's true. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I mean, so the Ash versus Evil Dead panel was really great. It was all of the um, the main cast. Uh, and they introduced um, Lee Majors, who is going to be playing Ash's dad in this second season. So uh, they are just kind of talking about, you know, how things were going and like uh, previews or, or not really, there wasn't a preview for it, but they were talking about hinting at what might happen uh, this season. Um, so slight spoiler, they got rights to Army of Darkness finally, so we might see some references to that. That's Wait, amazing. What? I didn't realize they didn't have the rights. That's wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah they, they didn't really talk about it at all or really reference it that much. Yeah. They said, so they said they, it kind of made sense in the first season because Ash was meeting these new kids and they were like, what is he going to say? Like, I went back in time and I saved all these people and like be like, I don't believe you, you crazy man. Leave. Yeah, because so. they had they had like a flashback to Evil Dead 2 in mm -hmm. like one of the first, I think the first episode actually. And uh, yeah, but they never referenced that he fought Deadites. medieval Deadites. Yeah, with his boom yeah. stick. Well, that's that's awesome. I still haven't gotten a chance to check out the first season. I really want to. It's... Did I tell you guys my theory on that? that show i don't think so <laughs> uh in the show like I, I i don't know maybe they touched on this uh in, later in the season but i only watched like probably a little over half of the first season but ash keeps trying to explore uh to get uh something translated you saw the show right jess Mm -hmm. Yep. What is it that he was trying to get translated? It was something in the Book of the Dead, right? Uh, yeah, the Necronomicon, like the words that would make, because he accidentally read it while he That's was right. drunk yeah. to impress a girl, and he's, so he released. He's trying to, to figure out how to get. Ash. He's trying to figure out yep. how to get, like, put the cork back on the bottle, basically. And and I I hope with all of my being that the answer ends up being Klaatu Verata Nikto, and he just didn't <laughs> remember it from. <laughs> That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, the whole time it's a quest for something that he should have known. It's so funny that there's no way that'll be it, but I wish it was. No, I really, really, He just really... forgot about it because he's been drunk. He just forgot. That that well, that's actually it. sort of the premise for the show. <laughs> nice. Well, he always forgets the last word, so... Yeah. yeah. And, and Jess, you, uh, you also did a walkthrough experience for Man in the High Castle with uh, props and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so it was this really surprisingly cool thing. You wouldn't think it would be. It was like this sort of uh, trailer, probably like two, the size of like two shipping containers put together. Um, and you kind of walked in and then you walked through what they were considering uh, the Imperial States. And they had like her uh, dojo outfit. I don't know what they technically call that, that she would wear for fighting in. Um, they had a bunch of props of like her IDs and they had... Um, uh, the grasshopper film playing on uh, like a screen and just some carts and stuff and they made it look like the Pacific States and then you kind of rounded the corner and then you were in uh, Nazi territory and they had kind of the more uh, uh, more of the film and then also 
uh, they had the Ranger Reich magazine on display, um, which was which was kind of fun because I thought that was a really clever moment in the show. Um, and then a bunch of, yeah, the officers' uniforms and clothes worn by other characters. And it's just amazing the level of detail that goes into the show uh, and just like the tiniest things that they had on display that really just made me enjoy the whole show and experience even more. Now, I realize that we, if, if in case you're not familiar with Man in the High Castle, we didn't describe the show at all. But in short, it's um, an alternate reality, 1950s, where the Axis won and uh, America is cohabitated by um, a portion of it is, is the Nazis and a portion of it is the Japanese. And there's sort of a neutral zone in the middle. And it's an incredible drama that takes place in between those two locales. Um, you should totally check it out. It's on Amazon. It's one of Amazon's exclusive shows. Um, now, we did speak to the cast, and that was an incredible experience. It was um, a, a roundtable, so, so like the cast was loaded in, and we saw different members at different points in time with Jess and I, as well as other members of the press, speaking to them um, in small interviews. Now, I actually haven't had a chance to review any of... I recorded these, but I haven't had a chance to review the audio yet. We might actually have a serviceable episode we can make out of this and some of the other stuff um, that we recorded from Comic-Con. I guess you'll find out about a week from now because I'm either going to definitely put all of it up on Patreon unedited. That's probably going to happen regardless. Or if there's some, if I can cobble an episode together out of it, then it'll be something we release on Nerdy Show. But I don't know yet. Um, overall, though, um, awesome people really, really dedicated to their roles, like to a degree that I didn't realize. Yeah, the uh, open Groton Fuhrer, like just everything that he would say and the level that he went in to like learn about this character, this really complex character. Um, so for those who don't know who he is, he's uh, a Nazi agent living in the U.S., and but he was a soldier um, before for the U.S., but the U.S. never entered the war, so he didn't actually fight in World War II. Um, but it, he just talks about all the complexities of this character and how he comes to terms with being a Nazi and all of these books that he read and like the rise and the fall of the Third Reich and, and everything to just get into the mindset of this character. And I think it really shows in his performance as well. The, the titles in that show kind of confuse me sometimes because you have like open groping Fuhrer and then there's well, open well, shipping Fuhrer well, it's, it's or whatever. Upton, Dupin, Wipton. <laughs> yeah, there's Wipton, Dupton, Scheiser. Yeah. Oop. Oprah Gruppenfuhr, but who I, I, I remember it by See? way of Uber Gruppenfuhr. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I have an Uber, I, I have an Uber Sometimes Gruppenfuhr. I hear it that way. <laughs> oh, Uber Open Gruppenfuhr. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, every time I want to drink this, this mask gets in the fu- I think it's, it's, it's starting time, to, it's I time think to that, take the mask off. No, I, I don't want to. You don't, you don't want to take it off? Well, well, it's supposed to be 15 a, to 20 minutes. We'll I want to know what it looks show. like. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll take it off. Hold on. You want to know what it looks like? There's we're recording this uh, on video. It's a part of me. <laughs> oh, what do I do with it? What do I do with Just it? Wad it up and eat it. What the fuck do I do with this shit? <laughs> it's nutritious. Ah. Oh, the slime is still there. What do we have any we don't have any you, you're not prepared. You didn't give any napkins to us. These are napkins. They're just moist napkins. Okay. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that's why I was wiping myself. Really. It's like a snail just ate a fucking peach and threw up on my face. <laughs> but you guys, your skin is glowing. You can really tell that the collagen has had the effect. That's from the radioactive material they used in making this shit. Oh. Um, so uh, other stuff we went to. I went to a um, uh, Luc Besson, the amazing director of Fifth Element and many other movies. Um, some, some good. Some, some not so mo- good. Most good. Most good. Quite frankly. Um He's working on a new sci-fi epic called Valerian, which is based on some French graphic novels that really inspired him growing up. Probably some of the uh, the stuff that that built up in his own mind into what we what we now know as Fifth Element. So he's working on a film adaptation of these comic books, and I went to a um, press conference with him and the stars. You and saw his Luke wife, the producer. I did. Yeah. What does he look like? Um, he looks like uh, a portly uh, Frenchman. Yeah. That's what I always thought he would look like. Who who is always partnered with a very attractive woman. He must be extremely charismatic. Is that his escort? Uh, no, no, no. Ma- mar- marriage usually uh, married to them. Um, anyway, <laughs> so uh, uh, the thing here's the thing. This is definitely going to be a Patreon perk. I don't think there's anything usable from this. This thing happens a lot to Jess and I. We go to these press events, and um, and nothing. Th- the happens. people. 
who wait in line to see the panels end up getting more information, more intimate information about whatever it is they're promoting than we do at the press because they don't want anything to get out before the press, before the panel happens, so they don't tell us anything. Um, so like, I asked a question of uh, Luc Besson, and his his answer was just like, wait and see. I'm like, which is the his answer to most everything else. What was your question? Um uh, it was something, Fifth element two. It was something to the tune of what makes this science fiction film distinct in either visuals or story from any other science fiction film that we've seen in the past ten to fifteen wait, years. He said, wait, wait and see. That, means he, like that good... means he doesn't know. He doesn't know what it looks like yet. He hasn't made it. He, <laughs> he should have even... just said, "Talk to our marketing department." <laughs> That's a really good impersonation you just did of of, of somebody that. You don't. <laughs> I know he's French, but you just sounded so, German. Re- re- regardless, they're of close. That, I'm excited for the film. Um, and then Jess and I both did the roundtables for Brad Neely's Hargnall and Sclopio Pipio. Um, Are you talking about Open Groupon Fear again? No, no, no. Oh. This, this is the the, car, the the Adult Swim series that's um, the follow up to China Illinois uh, from Brad Neely, uh, who you know, ba- China I, Illinois. Oh, you've never seen it? No. The Baby Cakes. Baby Cakes. Professor Brothers. They got their start on Super Deluxe and started. It's great. China, China Illinois is a fantastic series. I'd recommend to anyone it's on okay. Adult Swim. Uh, we we learned from it. It's unfortunately been canceled. And what's what's there in its place is this other show that he's doing right now, which is. Ooh, it's schizophrenic. It's a crazy, crazy skit show that's like, it's firing at a mile a minute. It's faster paced than um, Robot Chicken. Is it like um, the WarioWare of skit shows? Yeah, it is actually. Oh God, uh, is and it, it's animated. Is it not a steaming pile of crap like Robot Chicken? Um, it is not. <laughs> but I also don't like it anywhere near as much as the rest of his material. They have at least mm-hmm. one good skit a season. At least one. <laughs> that's a pretty good record. For that's them. true. Yeah. I guess. It, but you have to wade through so much oh God, garbage. Yeah, it's, like, it's horrific. So dude. we spoke to him and his production team. Uh, and again, the name of the show is Brad Neely's Hargnall and Sclopio Pipio. Um, <laughs> Are we talking about Man in the High Castle again? <laughs> Wait, that's the, na- that's the name of the show. That's the name of the show. Say it one more time, please. Brad Neely's Hargnall and Sclopio Pipio. Hargnall and Sclopio Pipio. Yep. Like, sounds, a P- like a PPO? I think it's another rank in the German army that... <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a trigger word for like when it comes on the air, whoever's a sleeper cell or whatever. Sclopio Pipio. Like, I must kill the president. <laughs> oh, Sclopio Pipio. It's happening right now. Um, Bor's gone. Um, so, or it's Pinocchio's brother. It's Sclopio Pipio. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, uh, it's my friend, Scorpio Pipio. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> That's what we sound like. <laughs> right. I'm gonna, I want to kiss you in the pasta like a two dogs. Um, <laughs> so, Scorpio Pipio, but, get out of here. But the, the highlight of the Adult Swim uh, press roundtables was easily speaking with Gendy Tartofsky, the creator of Samurai Jack and Symbionic Titan. Which is coming, well, Samurai Jack's coming back. Samurai Jack is coming back. Yeah. It's Netflix, right? On Adult Swim. So. Oh, I thought it was a Netflix produced thing. It's Adult Swim. Adult Swim, yeah. Getting their shit together. And uh, he told us that um, because it's on Adult Swim, it is going to be more violent than oh it was. Oh my god, thank you. Um, that is amazing. And, and at the end of, of Samurai Jack, if I remember remember remembering correctly, Jack is thrown farther into the future. So he gets there, and what he finds when he does battle for the first time is he kills a man and finds himself covered in not oil from robots, but actual blood. I and didn't has a see bit the last meltdown. episode! <laughs> what? No, this this is new. This is something he told us. Oh, that, shit. That, that Jack is going gonna, is gonna to kill a man on the show and oh. be like, oh my god, I've been killing robots for so long. The consequence of what I've done is really hitting me right now. I like now. that he's this like, world-famous, time-traveling samurai at this point. He's, he's only ever fought robots. He's never fought people. Not in the context of the show. Well, he's not no. killed a person. Yeah. He's, he's fought living things. Yeah. Wow. That is so... I'm so excited. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, so uh, maybe that... That was a very short interview, and maybe that won't be the last time we talk to him on Nerdy Show. Maybe. Well, you're winking at me. Are you <laughs> supposed to be winking at me? I don't know. I'm going to try for it, and we'll see... Uh, okay. I, I was... I, I was had some assurances made to me that Let's we... Let's get Guillermo del Toro, too. We I, were... Yeah. On the I, same episode. Yeah. Just hanging out. Just yeah. them hanging out. We're not going to be on it. Just them. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Which I would definitely want to listen to. Um, 
Shit, we did we did a lot of the other stuff at uh, at Comic Con. We we actually periscoped a an episode uh, uh, the panel for <laughs> MST3K uh, by popular request of uh, Nerdy Show fan James Hickson, one of the few people to write to us and tell us what he wanted us to see. When you say periscope, like did you sneak in and then your heads popped up mm. and you were just looking around? I think it's kind of like turtling. No, that's when yeah, you're when it when it comes out and then you, so you looks around a little bit. Okay, that's that's an, it's an app where you you broadcast what you're seeing. Um, via your phone. So we did that. Um, that so was Snapchat. Fun. Do they have an Twitch? app for turtling now too? <laughs> I mean, I can make one real quick. <laughs> I can show you it. Basically, uh, this season of MST3K, it's going to be good. Uh, what I didn't realize about it, even though I was backing it, was that uh, Joel Hodgson is not. Um, like I was backing it for this one guy. He turns out he's not. He, in he's, it. he's still the. He's like, not. He's not in it. Yeah, he's the creative force of it. But it's actually an all new cast, a completely new cast. I hope the main guy is Chris Hardwick. No, 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 no. It, it's, nope. <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to disappoint. Uh, We've already got your money. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's actually would make the show. It, really it's fun. a great cast. Some of the mad scientists from previous seasons are coming back, and uh, they showed us the the new opening segment of the the countdown to the films, and it's going to be some mind blowing um, uh, models and and puppetry and compositing. So. Definitely something to look forward to. Hmm. Um, shit, what else do we see there? Um, lots uh, of people. We saw of there was the the Nickelodeon 25th anniversary panel with uh, Joan and Vasquez's uh, TMNT short. Which, if you haven't uh, watched it yet, you should because it was yeah. pretty pretty I amazing. I didn't know he did that. Yeah, you want to see Joan and Vasquez do some Ninja Turtles? We I've can always link to it wanted. On I think page. he's the only one who should do Ninja Turtles <laughs> right now. I'm sick of these. Mo- he should make a movie and get funded for it. Because I'm sick of all this bullshit Ninja Turtle movie crap. Um, there's I think everybody is. No, it makes a lot of money from people who like shitty movies. Well, it's fine. The me- meanwhile, the Nickelodeon show is doing doing just fine. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, we saw the first the first episode of that too. That's true. the the first The first new episode coming out in just a few weeks of Ninja Turtles. It's like um, the CG looking one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was it was great. Some uh, some unexpected stuff happened in it, and uh, and and they did they did not say that was going to happen. It was a total surprise. Oh, cool. We just walked in there and saw it. Um, yeah, just exactly the right moment. It was pretty, it was yeah, pretty perfect. It was great. I was like, let's just go in here and sit down and see what happens. And they're like, brand new episode. <laughs> I got a couple exclusive things since that's like really getting random exclusive merchandise at Comic Con is kind of the one of the main driving factors of Comic Con these days. I got a uh, uh, a pin uh, from a, a company called is that Night Slash. Cake. That's Slash. This is this is this really cool pin of a limit. It's called Evil Turtle to make it legally distinct from <laughs> the Ninja Turtle character Slash. What? Edition of one hundred. They only made a hundred of these, and it's a it's a pin of the action figure design specifically of Slash from Ninja. I Turtles. used to have Slash, and he came with his little his little turtle tank and his little binky or his palm tree. That's I remember that <laughs> I had it from the show. Okay. And and also uh, Mondo produced a vinyl collection of all the music from Over the Garden Wall. Oh snap. Uh, which is really cool, um, and has I, some gorgeous, some gorgeous, gorgeous uh, vinyl design on here. Um, and then also, I, I met the, uh, the the cast of my favorite podcast, Beyond Yacht Rock, the guys who created the original. Uh, was, you already met me. I the, mean. What? <laughs> what the hell am I looking at, Cap? Um, the, the the guys who the guys who created the original Yacht Rock web series from before YouTube existed, um, and and defined the entire genre of. Late seventies, early eighties, smooth music, and and how all those. I thought things I was the cast the of your favorite podcast. I'm sorry, man. My heart. What the my hell is Yacht to, Rock? To beyond Yacht Rock, you gotta you gotta check out. a link to. And how to, do you go beyond something that's on a yacht? Well, Yacht Rock was about one genre, a really hilarious, um, uh, f- fake version of the 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 actual history of Kenny Loggins and Michael McDonald hanging out. Um, and uh, and now they they have a new show, a podcast on Feral Audio that's about them defining other arbitrary genres. So um, they they brought they brought some uh, some thrift store bin uh, vinyl that, that pertained to the show, and so I got a copy of Loggins and Messina's Full Sail uh, signed by the entire cast of Beyond Yacht Rock, and it was great talking with them. And I saw a live recording of their uh, most recent episode, uh, which which where they listened to the entire debut solo debut of Kenny Loggins' Celebrate Me Home, um, wow. which I expect that a only a f- in, in, wait, 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 wait. You you watched them record this episode? Yeah. And they just listened to an entire album? Yeah. And so people you watched people you watched people listen to an album? No. And this is your favorite podcast. No, because they talk over the music. They, they it's running commentary well, jokes. Well, that sounds awful. No, no, it's real good. 
It's, I mean, it's good for me. It's good for me and other people so who, wait, Kenny Loggins, who nerd out on weird music like I Kenny do. Kenny Loggins is not actually in the podcast. No. They just listen to his music. Yes. Oh, so these guys are these guys. If you, if you like the Portal Men, I'm still pissed uh, off that he's cheating on us with other podcasts. Yeah, me too. Hmm? All of a sudden, <laughs> I, I, I got I got to have. I was under I the distinct needs. impression that he Derpy probably, Show was his favorite podcast. He probably doesn't give other podcasts slimy shit masks to wear. Right? Yeah. They should be so lucky. This is how I express my affection. I wish they were. That I mean, he lucky. did. <laughs> we did get marshmallows that one time. You want marshmallows right Thanks now? Thanks for the diabetes. <laughs> I got a bag of them right over here. You want more marshmallows? Uh, I've got actual ecto cooler. I'm good. Oh, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question about San Diego Comic Con. Go for it. Were there any comics involved in anything you did since it's called Comic Con? Hardly. Okay. Just, um, just, which I is, had to ask. Which that. is the nature of Comic Con now? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Grant Morrison, I guess, redid his panel from last year. <laughs> Looked at that description. Yeah. And that, which is one of our favorite panels from last year, but it seemed like he was, uh, was. doing an encore performance, more or less. Guys, I just want to know if there's any new Spawn stuff. Spawn is still coming out, Brandon. Yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give <laughs> two shits about Spawn. Uh, thankfully, most people don't these days. <sighs> I wish you won. Good for you. That's a collector's item. Is it's it? It's worth a lot of money. Seriously? No. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Why are you trolling me? I was like, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it. <laughs> I don't know. Look it up, man. Probably not. Anything that says first issue collector's item is most definitely going to be a complete waste of your time and money. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's see. Do we anything else we want to mention from Comic Con? I'm trying to kind of drawing a blank right now. But we. Uh, yeah, I think I think that was all. That was most of the highlights. We we played a lot of Pokemon. We got a lot of new Pokemon over we there. Did. Were there any yeah. cool articulate figures? Like I, they, I assume they have yeah, everything. There's lots of action figures. Oh yeah, those turtles, those turtles Ninja from turtles? Um, uh, Neca. Yeah, then we saw some some amazing, amazing uh, film and video game replica Ninja Turtles. Some like huge scale, like 24 inches maybe. Like, they were third scale from actual size. Uh, 1989 movie Ninja Turtle action figures. Oh, so obviously you took pictures of them. Yes, okay. we did. Uh, if you ch- go go back in time with uh, Nerdy Show's Twitter and see all this cool stuff, we also got some uh, some interesting insights and some new. Uh, Action figures from Rogue One, um, and uh, speaking of, there's a I, rumor has it that there's going to be a Rogue One trailer, a new trailer dropping this week, which means we're recording State of the Empire. Look forward to it this coming mm-hmm. Monday, um, and I, I guess that puts us to uh, to me going to L.A. Where wait, he, wait, I have one, I have a question. Did, go you, for it. did you see any Rick and Morty stuff? You know, we 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 did. We saw, in fact, a thing that I really wanted to get one for you, but I just couldn't because it was there was a, it was barriers. an actual Morty. It was going to grab one. For it was you. it was a life size uh, Mr. Poopy butthole <gasps> body pillow. Yep. I Wait, that. you said you were you were going to grab one. Well, the thing is, is you had to win carnival games. Well, it's the uh, thought that counts for. So I'm sorry. He he was um, going to get. You. He wanted to get me a poopy butthole. <laughs> He has his own comic, I think, The Adventures of Mr. Poopy Butthole. That I know. Is that true? Yeah. He does. I got that at Comic Con. Yeah. I, I know something about a comic. I have it. Yeah, it's a. She, I just got an exclusive cover. It's a. It's called Sweet. Little Poopy Superstar, and it's Mr. <laughs> Poopy, it's Mr. Poopy Butthole's ba- uh, backstory and an adventure with Summer. It's funny. Oh no, I lied. It's back on my bookshelf. It's funny that you say it's an exclusive because I just saw it somewhere else. No, no, an exclusive cover. Oh, okay, I was like, I've seen that recently. There's lot there's like there's lots of exclusive covers there. For example, there was an exclusive cover of um Archaea Press's Labyrinth um anthology comic that you could has a has a punched out mask so you can wear Jareth's mask from the ballroom scene. Aren't these variants? They are variants, yes. Don't we not like variants? I don't like I mean, variants, I don't care. But you but... go to Comic Con and you pay double the price for an exclusive cover <laughs> <laughs> and you either have fun with that or you resell it for a lot more money later. And if you want to do that, that's on you, pal. Unfortunately, I know people that would do that, and I hate them. Anyway. <laughs> um, so I went to Los Angeles. I had a good, fun few days there. I mentioned hanging out with uh, Genki Mistress in Little Tokyo. But I also hung out with Bob Dolman, the screenwriter for Willow. 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 And, Willow. And what do you mean hung out? You I just met at a bar? Uh, I mean, um, Matt Spill, my co-host from State of the Empire, and I went off to a restaurant and spent many hours talking to Bob Dolman um, and you you recorded it? No, obviously. no, we didn't. It was, Shit. but but we're going to talk about that probably some on State of the Empire coming up. That That's was a really great cool. experience. And so you obviously talked about a sequel. 
Um, our weekend at Bernie's three that he can get in on if he really wants to write a chapter. You obviously <laughs> mentioned that. You gave him a copy, right? Oh, yeah. He's he's on board for Weekend at Bernie's Well, three. I mean, you're in L.A. You're like, here's the script we're working on. And he should just, he should just look at it and be like, Will you read my screenplay? Honestly, he'd probably just like, what the fuck? It's probably – he'll probably be like, I'm funding this immediately. It's so – it's so out there. This is what Hollywood needs right now. That's what he sounds like. It was a good time. It was a real good time. Chapter um, two, three weeks earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of how all of Weekend at Bernie's goes so far. But Weekend at Bernie's 3 is a longstanding nerdy show project that we're very sorry hasn't been officially released yet. But I will direct you to an earlier episode of Nerdy Show Book Club where we read a rough draft of Brandon's f- debut chapter. We should release them in chapters. We're going to. That's the plan. That's why mm. we we're waiting so long. We need to have a, a little bit of a buildup so we can miss deadlines and still be okay. That's the that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> um, hopefully coming sooner than later. We never miss deadlines. Mm. <laughs> never, ever. Very punctual. Very <laughs> punctual group we are. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, moving <laughs> on. So, yeah, I, uh, it was, I, had a, I had a great time out there. We'll talk a little bit more about that in State of the Empire because um, a lot of Star Wars stuff sort of happened there because I, I was rooming with Matt Spill, the co-host from State of the Empire. So that's then Star Wars stuff ensued. I played the Star Wars Battle Pod, by the way, for the first time oh, at Dave & Busters. So did we. Friggin we played the new level. Amazing. I played the Force Awakens level. Yeah, Taco Donna. It's really good. Yeah, Taco, Taco Donna, my favorite taco place. <laughs> it's, it was really fun. Now, I'll remind everybody here on Nerdy Show, in case you're not tuning in to State of the Empire, Star Wars Battle Pod is an awesome, immersive uh, experience that's, I think, only at Dave & Buster's. You should totally check it out. And when you do, post your scores on the Nerdy Show forums. We have a whole thread dedicated to um, trying to beat each other's scores. Oh, I got rank 382. That's all I got. <laughs> we need actual numeric scores and star rankings. Oh, that's right, because ranks, do, that's right, that doesn't matter. So There's get, actually one uh, at my movie theater, so I don't oh, think it's just at David Buster's. Cool, we'll be, I will maybe say, out there in the wild. They had a battle pod, because I guess this company makes it for various things, next to it that wasn't Star Wars. It was, okay. a, it was a fighter jet yeah. one, and I got sixth place out of like the 300,000 people on it. Wow, you're so a top gun, Brandon. I was like lieutenant demon of the sky is what it said. Oh, um, another Star Wars Same. thing that we can That's mention. That's how I think of you anyway. Jess and I went to the Her Universe fashion show. I don't, what? I don't know how to f- what is that? feel about that. Is that the one that what is Eleanor's it? dad hosts? Or, what? Oh, what? I'm sorry. He hosted what? fashion shows. Right? <laughs> no. It's um, the NPR guy. I don't know. Uh, it, Her Universe is a clothing company of, of fandom apparel started by the woman who voices Ahsoka in Clone Wars and Rebels. Oh, I'm thinking of Miss Universe. I'm sorry. This is, these are two different things. <laughs> Hell yeah, this isn't is. uh, put on by Donald Trump, so. Her universe. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty. I thought it was just universes created by women, and you get to see them on display. I thought that would be cool, like a science thing. Well, it was It was actually a uh, a contest of, uh, of couture clothing all themed around different uh, pop culture properties, like from NeverEnding Story to Harry Potter and um, It's a really good Mad cosplay. Max. No, like it was it was interpretive. Mm. Like there was a, a dress inspired by Furiosa. Oh, for really example. cool. Um, pictures are, are online of all this stuff, and it was really cool. Um, I, uh, that, that's my two cents. What, you got anything, Jess? Yeah, there's that. But I think you missed the important piece, which made you think of it, is uh, Ashley Eckstein's dress that she wore for like hosting the awards was completely made out of Legos. So it was Lego couture, and it was made to look like uh, Ahsoka's face. How do you move in a dress? I mean, I'm assuming they're like glued or sewn on to actual fabric, or are they just 100% you can't move your arms and legs? Or they have no, like it, was, it was sewn on to fabric. So it was like, it was the guy that makes those Lego sculptures. Like, if you've ever seen the one online of like the yellow guy like opening his chest yeah, and like yeah. all the Lego places? Yeah. So it was that guy designed it and he came up with a way to sew pieces onto uh, fabric. And. So it weighed like 25 pounds, I think, and, and it can stop she bullets. She wore it, and it, yeah, it looked actually really cool. Like, Did you the way to sew them cool, on involve but... hot glue? That's what I was <laughs> I, hot glue. I don't think that would have flown, given the the shape that it it, it, it moved really really well. Um, it was like it was like sequins but square, like very 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 well done. Just got to put the hot glue in the right places. That's yeah. the key. <laughs> You just completely fill them with hot glue, and then you just stick it on. It'll just drip yeah. down. Yeah, they're hollow, right? Yeah. I guess before my uh, my <laughs> whirlwind adventures continue, uh, we could uh, we could talk about the awesome people who make Nerdy Show possible. 
That's the thing we could do. We could. We could. We should. Nerdy Show is completely listener supported. <clears throat> that means that we exist only because you kind, wonderful people give us money every month. And if you don't want us to exist, just tell us. Just tell us. <laughs> if, you, if you really don't want us to exist, you know, either just just tell us. You're right going to have to get a petition. Don't be around you're the gonna bush. Have, there's going to have to be me. at least 20,000 signatures. Change.org petition. <laughs> My private at at 20,000 signatures, we will address it. <laughs> we will we will bring it as a topic to the meeting after 20,000. Yes, signatures. at 20,000 signatures we'll consider, we'll consider <clears throat> dissolving the network. <laughs> there's there's a couple um ways you can contribute to us. One is by subscribing to us on Patreon at patreon.com/nerdyshow. Even a dollar gets you early release episodes, exclusive perks and uh $5 or more a whole deluge of new and exciting perks including all of these recordings that I've been talking about from Comic-Con and also Camp Fan Gamer, which we're going to talk about soon. And um, then uh, $10 or more gets you access to the Nerdy Show Lounge, which is a Facebook group where we all hang out and uh, talk about all kinds of stuff. Hosts and we're, and we're all and civil, fans alike. We're all civil there to each other. And nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, safe space. It's, it, is, it is a safe space. It's a very safe space. Um, sometimes we give dating advice. That's happened. Uh, so we got to give a shout out to some new patrons, Jared Morgan and Shannon Archibald. Both new, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Nerdy Show Patreon. Those are my favorite new patrons. And then uh, we, we can also do one-time donations. If you go to nerdyshow.com slash support, it lists all the different ways you can contribute. We got a recent contribution from Roger, Roger Alderman, who gave us a donation on account of the Ghostbusters role-playing resources we provide at gbrpg.com. If you want to pick up the classic 1980s Ghostbusters role-playing system that's been long out of print, we have all the tools on how to do it and even make the game better than it was when it came out. Do we have a P.O. box? We do not. Oh, I was going to say, you could send us, like, jewels and gemstones. Well, our, our P.O. Like, box I would love some jewels. Like, a P.O. box. Just, like, send us, like, random a random gemstones. Like our our, our gems. P.O. box is a comic shop. Um, yeah, send everything to a comic shop. You'll, you'll, you'll find, there's, there's a contact page on nerdyshow.com. If you want an address, that's the address. I just want a sack of gemstones. I've always wanted to be sent, like, a sack of, like, emeralds or rubies or something. Or <laughs> rupees. <laughs> Worthless rupees. <laughs> Start point. cutting grass. Yeah, I should. Uh, you, you can also support us here. by shopping on Amazon. We can probably buy facsimile rupees or jewels. You to buy anything Brandon. on Amazon. Um, and, and if you follow our Amazon links, all the money you spend, a percentage of it comes back to Nerdy Show at no additional cost to you. You can bookmark that link and make it your only portal to Amazon and constantly give to Nerdy Show, which or makes Or do like difference. I did and bookmark it on somebody else's computer so every time they go to Amazon... They won't even know. They won't even load. know. Oh, my God. Can yeah. we make a virus You're like a Robin that? Hood without any <laughs> stealing at all, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you're like interfering with someone's life, but it doesn't affect them. That's so weird. <laughs> I have done it legitimately yeah. to a few people. Cool. <laughs> now, we got some shout-outs because at $10 or more on Patreon, you also get a monthly shout-out. The first is a is from Chief of Stuff. This is actually a bit of a correction. He had a, he had a message that was not properly relayed, I think, because I wasn't here to relay it aptly. That's Dropping the ball, been. boy. Um, I, I saw it. I, I received it. I just didn't understand that it was a shout-out. He said, I'm sorry to say this is my last month slash shout-out on Patreon. Money is tight and push came to shove, and I will miss the Nerdy Show Lounge Facebook group. I, I mean, we understand sometimes in life you need to put oh, yourself yeah. first. You Absolutely. need to take care of yourself. And I, I, I apologize because I didn't realize that was a shout out. When, when it was sent to me, I thought it was just like, like a message a private, to like, us. Hey, like, guys, yeah. Yeah. Like, but yeah, shout out. Yeah. And, and, and Chief of Stuff, thank you so much. And thank you for your continued support. Yes, thank Indeed. you. And uh, and Bor, you got ooh, you got a nice long oh, shout out. This is a, this is a huge shout out, and I'm gonna probably have a really long discussion with probably myself about it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just just, just because it? I know nobody else is gonna be able to relate? No, I mean like right now is what probably what's gonna happen. Uh, so this is from Tem Su, and it's a negative shout out. So naturally, I have to read it because I love negative shout outs. But it's not just because you love negative shout outs; it pertains exclusively to you above all other hosts on the well, entirety also, of the Nerdy Show Network. Also, I sort of willed negative shout-outs into existence. You if did. You think about it. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, uh, a negative and frustrated shout-out to a subsection of the World of Warcraft design team uh, regarding their choice of location for the upcoming class hall for rogues. I feel confident that Bohr can go into this fully, but I will try to explain what's up. Yeah, I probably can. Uh, the next World of Warcraft expansion is introducing order halls for all classes in the game. These are cross-faction sanctuaries that only your class will inhabit. They further the story, offer missions, and grant players access to cool artifact weapons. They are some f 
there are some fine looking order uh, order halls. On one hand, you have warriors who are basically uh, in Valhalla. Warlocks get a whole planet inside of the Twisting Nether. And what? Death that sounds amazing. Sorry. And, <laughs> and Death Knights have a floating necropolis, which arguably, I mean, we've had that same floating necropolis as Death Knights f- since Death Knights were a thing. Uh, so that's not really new, but uh, that, that's just me uh, with an aside there. Uh, back to the shout out. On the other hand, you have uh, my specific uh, I'm skipping over, skipping over stuff here. Uh, my class, rogues. Rogues are in the sewers, home of rescue, stink, and filth, like rogues. Don't be a fucking rogue who steals <laughs> things from people. That's what they they, well, you they can't sneaky. Steal. You can't really sewers. steal. They sneaky rogue. and they steal and they are I'm a rogue and they hurt people. <laughs> I mean, that's you belong in the stink hole. The cart pirate. All right, let me finish. Arr. Let me finish. More, <laughs> more specifically, they're in the sewers of Dalaran, which adds injury on top of insult. You see, Dalaran is a city of mages. Literally the worst class. So <laughs> not only are we walking around in poo, it's the poo of mages. <laughs> but it gets better because this class hall deep underneath the city of Dalaran literally shouldn't be there because Dalaran is a floating city. What's the underground of a floating city look like? It looks like wide open spaces because it's nothing but airspace. Does now, Sorry. now I understand there are some games, maybe Elder Scrolls, that have pulled off the sewers motif for a guild hall. But you can't tell me there wasn't a mansion, a crypt, or something in the World of Warcraft implemented uh, or not that would have been a better fit for these sneaky sneaks. I loathingly begrudge to the almighty Blizzard that it won't keep me from playing their game, but damn if it wasn't a stupid decision. P.S. Boar doesn't play a mage, does he? Gosh, that'd be awkward. Uh, and to address that right off the bat, no, I do not. You have uh, like seven characters. Not even one of your like seven thousand characters. No, I I I'd go warlock when nope. when push comes to it's shove there because enough. I'd rather have fell magic than the glitzy arcane stuff because it's all you know bright fuzzy colors and pink, <laughs> pink and blue and I'd rather have you know fire and destruction from warlocks. But uh, beside the point, mm-hmm. I I saw this and. I'll, I, I got to say, Temsu, on first glance, I thought I knew where you were going with this uh, because I had a similar uh, complaint about this whole rogue having the sewers of Dalaran being their class hall because that means that only rogues can go to this place. And it turns out that this particular place that the guild hall is was one of my favorite hangouts in Wrath of the Lich King because they're recycling the city from Wrath of the Lich King. It's still Dalaran, but... It's a new instance of it for the new uh, expansion, and they teleported it to a new so continent. So you can't go there at all unless you I can't go to this section which of... Which is your hangout spot. Which was my hangout spot <laughs> because I'm not a rogue. So I'm you pissed. you be a rogue. I huh? am pissed because you have the place that I want to go, <laughs> and you're fucking complaining about it. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually a very negative shout out. I considered creating a rogue just so I could go back to this place and you don't even want it. <laughs> <laughs> and and let me let's talk about floating cities and sewers for just a moment. Why did they include the sewer along with it? Well, I, I can explain that because Dalaran, when they teleport it, they create a sphere around the city to teleport it. And the sewers happen to be in the underground portion of that sphere that goes underground because they they need some support structure for the city. Otherwise, they're going to have to, like, keep some sort of magical structure support for all of their roads. Otherwise, their roads are just going to crumble down into the air. I was going to say it's it's magic. It's a floating city. Yeah, was, Why can't yeah. you have a sewer? It's magic. Plus, it, the sewer's attached to the city. It's yeah. just hanging down there, but it's attached. Plus, it's infrastructure that they obviously created. He's Why gonna, would they want to obliterate it? upset with your response. Well, I don't sh- care. He, he <laughs> is shitting all over your sewer. my favorite hangout spot. Which is a shithole. So yeah. Like, that's where you love to be, man. <laughs> See, but the the... the the part of the sewer that the, the sewer in Dalaran is broken up into like two different areas. There's one area where people like like to do little duels and stuff. And actually, in the previous uh, expansion, well, actually, Wrath of the Lich King, they they had Ninja Turtles in the in the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> that is not allowed. They they did though. They had <laughs> they had four little turtles, and they were all around this like uh, there's like some sort of a toxic ooze thing that was nearby them. And there was a rat that looked like it was teaching them. 
<laughs> I don't know if that's still in the new expansion. I haven't explored it that much. But Only I do know that it. the other half of the sewer was like this cool like bar and it had a bank and all this cool stuff. And, and pretty much everything that you needed from the city was in this neat little corner of the sewer that now the rogues have taken well, over. Well, did they teleport the whole sewer up there or is there still like a chunk left where you can just... Like I it? said, it, it's, it's sort of like they just put a giant magical sphere and then just teleported that and and, and there's bedrock below the city and below the sewer and everything too. Can you jump in the hole that's left behind now? Yeah, actually you can. Yay. Hang out in there. Hang out in the hole and cry about well, it. Well, it's on a different continent because they <laughs> so? teleported the city and made it float. Just hang out in the hole that's left. I mean, you can, but nobody's probably going to hang out with you. Can you build property in Warcraft? I don't know yet. Is no, that you, a thing that can't. ever happened? No. Where you could, like, build yeah, but you can hang out there by yeah. yourself for to make a point. And cry. And then just forward slash weeping and just stand there. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's, he's got a hotkey for that, a macro for every time he attacks. Actually, you can. sets forward slash weeping. You can motion. go <laughs> into the Wrath of the Lich King version of Dalaran, I believe. So you could probably still hang out there in this whole. Point I could, but good. I wouldn't be anywhere <laughs> near where I needed to be because I couldn't like do any quests. You're or level anything, 100. But... You need to be anywhere. Literally. Well, the level cap raises to 110 at the end of the month, and so I mean, I need to get to 110. I don't think you need. I gotta sewers. collect my artifact weapons and then upgrade them. We got artifact and like I said, weapons in Neverwinter. And like I said, I, I have no idea what I even want to be now. I don't, I don't know which class I want to heal with. I don't know which class I want to tank with. I, I'm having a real crisis here. In Neverwinter. And this guy's upset <laughs> that he doesn't like my cool hangout spot. You create your own hangout spot in Neverwinter. God. Just saying. Do they have like career seminars in, in Warcraft? Can you yeah. like go to like, <laughs> like you're going to college? You I kind of, I kind of wish they did. <laughs> I mean, cause I don't, I don't know if I want to be a paladin cause they get the cool like Ashbringer sword, but I, I don't really like like the holy paladin motif but it's not very yeah but it's super fun to play and well that's all that matters <sighs> yeah yeah you could be goddamn the holy paladin <laughs> like shamans shamans right now seem like they're the best healers but i don't know if i want to be a little fucking goblin guy or a tauren <laughs> or like, i like undead and characters and the amount of the orcs. amount of classes that undead can be are, are pretty be a, limited one of those pandas what? Who wants to be a panda? I don't know. That was a huge, a huge expansion. There's pandas and panda, panda land. I don't know. So I'm probably going to be, I, I've <laughs> narrowed it down to monk, death knight, and uh, demon hunter. I'm probably going to be th Does demon hunter use things, crossbows? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe my shaman too. I don't know. Does it, what does a demon hunter use for its main weapons? Warglaves. Okay. Well, let's just move on <laughs> to Gary or shout out. Brandon, what you got? Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> this is from Gary I think I'll use my monthly shout out to highlight some awesome indie games. Uh, this month is Titan Souls. Kill the Titans and claim their souls. This game won't waste your time with weak enemies. It is just you and the beautifully crafted environment. Excellent soundtrack and the Titans. It's one hit kill combat is both challenging and extremely satisfying. This game's attention to detail makes for a wonderful polished experience and the variety and quality of the Titan fights ensures that it remains interesting and challenging. He is absolutely correct. I've played Titan Souls. It is crazy it's it's got the spirit of dark souls maybe that's why it's called titan souls honestly i think it is base you die in one hit but all the major bosses pretty much die in one hit if you can line up your shot it's a great game it's a great shout out gary thank you i got one from Jaden Numi who says i've been dying lately to know what a conversation between father grandfather and old man mcgucket would sound like on the topic of interdimensional demons and again, remember to adopt an animal from your local animal shelter when looking for a new friend. From cats to dogs to birds and reptiles. Thank you. If it's a domesticated pet, they've got you covered. <laughs> Thank you for putting birds in there. A lot of birds I, I put see, to I death. I see what they did there. There's a lot of birds put to death all the time because people only want cats and dogs. So I'm just saying. Some Thank very you. kind animal welfare messages lately. I think that's really cool that everybody's doing that. And and thank you for, for keeping in mind Brandon's... Brandon's interest. I mean, and, and, and awareness. Really, I didn't. I didn't realize how many birds were put down. So that's really like, well, every time people have like friggin' exotic pets or parrots, and then they don't want them anymore. Where do you think they go? They go to a shelter, and if no one wants them, they get you know they go nighty they, night they, death time. They get released in the wild. And in, that's why in you have San Pythons Francisco, and they let them go in the wild, and now there's green parrots that hang out in certain areas of the city. I mean, that's they do that on purpose. <laughs> Uh, yes. No, they let him go like years ago, and then they just all breed it. And uh, not yeah, the yeah. shelters, okay. people who own the pets. They're like, fuck him. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, Even though like, their wings are this. like clipped, and it's going to take them. They'll pretty much die instantly unless they grow new feathers back, which is not happening overnight. 
So. so let's get to the first part of Jade Numi's thing, which is a conversation between Father Grandfather and Old Man McGucket from Gravity Falls. First off, I've never seen Gravity Falls. I don't know who Old Man McDucket is or whatever his name is. I don't even remember if I know how to do Father Grandfather. Wait, wouldn't McGucket mainly just say a bunch of nonsense? He sure would. Father and so even though I, I'm not Alex <laughs> Hirsch and I, can't, I, I haven't lived with the character of Old Man McGucket for long enough to do a halfway decent impression, I'm going to try. Is this something we're doing right now? We're doing it right now. Um, on the topic of interdimensional improv. demons, so um, I'm gonna, I'm really I'm gonna butcher this. So just be prepared for that. I, I don't think I can it, do Father Grandfather's voice right now. I can try. I'm Ooh. glad I didn't well, get tapped for this because I, <laughs> I I imagine somebody would probably tap me for doing a McGucket, which I could probably this. do, but I just can't put my mind in Father Grandfather. If you if you I, if you do feel you could step no, into it. No, I, I I I have no idea Woo! what it would be running hey, through. Oh. Oh, wax them all horny toads! This is as good as I can do! <laughs> is that the character? This is as good as it gets! Yeah! It's after all! Hey, I'm Father Graham. I'm Father Graham. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the great country of Georgia, not the state. <laughs> and I sell Bibles. Why don't you tell us about little baby Jesus? Woo! Well, why do you sound like Bill Cosby? <laughs> a Bill Cosby doesn't sound anything like that. This is a mediocre Bill Cosby impersonation. I'll, I'll think you're a very pretty woman. Why don't you look over there? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Take a nice deep drink. It's on the house. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I just want to hear that. I thought there was going to be something about homemade pudding pops in there. Uh, there was something far worse than that, if you heard it. <laughs> <laughs> something far worse. We don't talk about pudding anymore with Bill Cosby. We should. No, no thanks to that. Hannibal Buress, you son of a gun. Uh, so what is this, what is this conversation going to look like? Uh, well, <clears throat> what, let's have, I mean, uh, Father Grandfather's no stranger to discussing the uh, the demons beyond the threshold of reality, so why don't you get, lay down a little bit about interdimensional demons, and I'll just chime in there with whatever for just just a spell. Just <clears throat> a hot minute. Come on, brain. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, this is Father Grandfather. So the first thing you need to know about those interdimensional demons is it takes a lot of energy for a demon to come in this world. That's why you don't see it too much. You basically have a giant demon the size of a building, and how the demons get to our reality is they have to crawl in that demon's mouth, and then the big old demon lines his booty hole up with our dimension, and they have to keep crawling until they get through the sphincter into our dimension. I seen it. And they I have seen to it keep happen. eating. They have to keep eating in order to feed the portals. It takes a lot of energy. I was sipping on my on a boot string. Woo! Oh, this is not this is not working. Um, <laughs> this is going well. I was, I was I was sipping on a boot string, and then I saw him come out of my butt. Get down, little girl. Just get up again. It's falling apart. I have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, it, it seems like Sir, a legitimate no thing. The gucket was what saying. What you're talking about? <laughs> let, me, <clears throat> let me switch to the crazy old man that I know considerably better. Get up, strange. Uh, no, we're, when you're talking about the human centipede of demon convergence into the into the threshold of what we know as three dimensional reality, you have Portal to demons, yeah. boy, you have to understand that their matter is usually through the vortex of a living being. One day you're patting your your precious dog, Prince Fluffy Britches McDangle, and uh, <laughs> named after his furry pants and also his McDangle, if you know what I mean. And and then you you find it turned inside out, and it's got centipedes for eyes and needles for testicles, and and it, 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 there you have it, a portal to the demon made rich in flesh and blood and and other fluids. If you have a mind to examine it with a microscope, I'm just gonna say I agree with you on that, <laughs> and leave it at that. <laughs> That's how conversation's gonna go. This is pretty one sided. I like your your part of the conversation. <laughs> Thanks, Jay <Jayden. laughs> Newman. You're welcome. Now, uh, one other thing you can do to support Nerdy Show that involves no money whatsoever is to leave us a rating or a review on iTunes. That's a, uh, a five star rating would be wonderful. All of our shows in the network could use your love, and I think we're at about thirty now for regular old Nerdy Show. That not the network wide stream, but just this show that you're listening to. And we need hundreds more than that to really make a dent on iTunes. So if you can, if you can, log into iTunes, create an account, give us a rating and a review if you have time. If you do have a review, we'll read it on the show, just like uh, what's about to happen. Take it away, Jess. 
Yeah, this one is from Red Delphi, and the title is Good God, Just Listen to Them Already. Uh, it's a good review. I think. Is it? Yeah, I, I, we can just actually end it there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's more. Sorry. Yeah, so, <laughs> summed it up nicely. Uh, I think the best thing about Nerdy Show and the entire network, really, is that listening to an episode feels like sitting in a conversation with your friends. The banter between them is great, and their insights and recommendations on media and pop culture are generally spot on. That might also be the greatest weakness, though, because although listening to them feels like a conversation with your friends, the technology to respond to contribute to a pre-recorded show is still beyond us, and you may feel a little left out. Sad. Fear not, however, because you might be able, or you might not be able to offer your two cents on things as they are being recorded. Cap and the rest of the showrunners do a great job responding and interacting with members of their fan base who elect to make their voices heard in the forums, lounge, or any other methods of social media. These might be some of the friendliest nerds out there, so give them a listen, get to know them, and before long, you'll come to start thinking of them as your friends as well. It's a good review. I'd have to say, though, I bring no insight. (laughs) Everyone else brings insight. And I'm okay with that. I'm just just here to talk. My question was friendly? (laughs) <laughs> well that's what jess and i are here for <laughs> and delphi thank you so much for that wonderful <clears throat> wonderful review um that's awesome and uh and yeah if uh if you're not if you're not up on that you can always reach out to us and have conversations with us on the forums or if you want... i practically chewed out the person who gave me a shout out yeah <laughs> yeah he wasn't even like <laughs> arguing with you and you're just like let me tell you asshole. temsu did come to you with a negative shout out that's so true there was, there, there was gonna be blood one way or another <laughs> But it wasn't a bastard. didn't expect it to be his blood. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So thanks, guys. Mm. Thanks for the wonderful shout outs. Um, now, moving on. Oh, how- also, I was going to say yeah. speaking of sewers and portal demons' anuses, I brought a picture. Oh, of, no. Of the inside of my anus from a camera's perspective. <laughs> if, anyone, if anyone wants to see it, the really good one is the middle one. I know, here, Cap, you can see it. The camera will be able to see it. No, here, I'll, what, I'll you, turn you're going to gonna deny people these. these okay. I mean, these, these are not explicit images. They're, they're medical images. Here's here's the inside of, I don't know if it's my colon, but uh, can you see that? <laughs> you see how rib that is? That's for her pleasure. Wait. <laughs> Or I guess his if you can get up that far. But do you see? Is it? Can you see it, Bor? Uh, kind of. Uh, you can get closer, actually. Oh, there you go. See that brown one? I'll lift it up. That's a little where bit my more. poop is made. Up. That's where my poop. That's poor's poo made. That's. I had to drink is... a gallon of fluid to make that baby empty. It's legitimately disgusting. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there but an empty list void. Like literally, there's a vacuum in there. Mm-hmm. Not a vacuum cleaner, literally, but like a lack of. of what anything. other pictures you got there? We've got are those oh, two whoops. two NSFW? Uh, we have one that says the retroflexed view of my rectum. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I have my esophagus. I don't know if you want to oh, see that. Good. We have the bottom of my esophagus, which I don't know. If, I don't. I know bird anatomy. I don't know human anatomy, so it might be my proventriculus. I'm not sure, but it's got scorch marks. Like it looks like it's been set on fire a little bit. It's like a little dark, and I was so like, so where do we cut to give you a deeper voice? No, and <laughs> on, on and the chart. So, <laughs> and so the doctor was like, you have burn marks. I was like, that's because I breathe fire, and they didn't believe me. And they're like, no, those are acid burns. We need to get them under control. And I was like, I breathe fire. Leave me alone. And they strapped me down and sedated me again. But yeah, that was. That was are some interesting pictures that's, that's all i wanted to say moving so on how are you doing because clearly I'm those fine. those pictures weren't taken for no good reason i don't know my stomach hurt and then they shoved a camera in my booty hole and my mouth hole and they met this will make it feel better the funny thing is well i posted i well i yeah there was a video taken of me waking up from the drugs posted on facebook which oh yeah it's, it's pretty great yeah well they basically they were like and then they yelled at denica for having a camera yeah they were like this is the drug michael jackson was on you can't take like, pictures in here b- before I, yeah get this right right before i fall asleep they're like this is the drug michael jackson was on i was like wait didn't he od didn't he die on didn't it? he and die then, like, on. <laughs> and then like, like that's like the time i hit my head snowboarding and i was going to the hospital for a concussion and they're like you know natasha richardson died of exactly this thing yeah. <laughs> i was like wow thanks but then thanks you so much. you lay down and you close your eyes and you're like there's this dark comforting blanket of pure darkness and void covering you and you're like we're giving I, you the I, same amount like, of morphine that it takes to kill a cat <laughs> and you're like i'm at peace here in this empty list void and then you wake up so that's it that's my experience and i wanted to go back to the void boy but they wouldn't let me back and i asked them i was like give me the drugs and send me back and well like, if you want to go back to the void you should obviously roll warlock 
I should tell you that. Because they have – their order hall is in the Twisting Nether, which here's, obviously is going to be the best place for you. Here's the funniest Don't part. go to the cool sewer. I'm about sure. to tell you something now that only one other person knows, that only Denica knows, okay. and maybe possibly the nurse or doctor that walked in on me. So this is here's a funny part. Walked of this. in on you. Here's what happened. Oh here's what happened. So I'm very sensitive to a lot of medications. They just hit me like a truck. So when I was waking up, they were like, he's abnormally loopy from this. This isn't normally <laughs> what happens because I was like out of it. And most people, when they wake up, they're just like, hey. So – I swear the nurse told me to go to the bathroom, and I guess she wanted me to change, but I was just thinking literally go to the bathroom. So I'm wearing this gown, and I go in the bathroom, and there's no lock on it, and I shut the door, and I hop up on the toilet seat like a bird, <laughs> and I just lift up the gown, and I'm just like, do I need to poop? Do I, am I pushing something out of here? What's happening? And she comes in, she's like, oh, God. She's like... What are you doing? I was like, you yeah, told me to use the bathroom. She's like, you need to change. And then she goes out. And Danica told me later that she's like, do I need to send you in there? He's doing something weird in there. And she's like, she's like, oh, God, what is he doing? And she's like, he's perching like an animal. And he's like, he's like, oh. And then, I, and then like, I got dressed and got out of there. And, and she was like, oh, thank God. I never wanted to see that. So thank you for getting dressed. I was like, you're no. welcome. I, I have one question you about the story. I heard about it. And, and she was expecting you to change. In there. The nurse were like, "He's gone crazy from the meds. We have to right. do something." And she's like, "And she's dead." like, "That's normal. Sorry, that's his normal behavior." But she was expecting you to be changing in there, and she walked in to help you. Like, why did she even she walk walked in into on the you? bathroom? Because my legs couldn't. Yeah, because you, you're really like my legs. Wait, was hard wait. To move. So while I, I thought you said she walked in on you, she so, walked me over so, to the bathroom and then told me to change. Like, I just put my pants on. She, well, she came back like. Ten minutes later, I, she thought I was like dead. I don't know how much time passed. So you were perching on the toilet for ten minutes. Time, time had no meaning where I was, where my mind was. There, there was no time. It was only me and the bathroom. That was my whole universe, as far as I was concerned. Oh. And then this woman comes barging into my universe. Is like, what are you doing? I swear, she told me to use the rest. If only we could have like an internal monologue of what was going on in his brain when all he was perching was, on the toilet for ten was, minutes. Use the restroom. And then I was like, okay. And then I just hopped up, man. And I was like, nothing's coming. There's nothing in there. What do you want me to use? There's nothing in there. <laughs> I guess they push. I guess they push air up in you. So there's probably. So like you air didn't in there. have to go. And I thought she told you're me. just going through the motions. I was out of my mind. What do you want? I can't, I can't be held responsible for the fucking drugs they gave me. God, it's like propozole. Propos- oh. I don't even know what they gave. Oh man, propos- oh, it's so good. My face hurts. <laughs> anyway, that was my little poop story. My super pu- super poopy. It would have been better if after she like walked in on you seeing you do that, you're like, why am I doing this? And she's like, I have no fucking idea. And then actually she came in. She's like, why aren't you dressed? I was like, you told me to, you told me to use the bathroom. She's like, no, I said you change. She said, you said, you said use the bathroom. And then she just left. She just left me. And it was like, I need to get security or something. Anyway, so what were we about to talk about? I, don't, uh, I, I guess, have no idea what's going I, on I, anymore. Science, plagues, death, destruction. Yeah. Yeah, all of death and destruction. All of the above. I thought we should talk about something in the in the world or news at some point that isn't like. Oh, do you want to talk about some new Star Trek discovery theories? Yeah, uh, yeah let's talk about more sci-fi. It's, there's stuff. really not that much to it, but let's there, talk about some fake sci-fi stuff. There, there has been a, a theory that because of the registry number of the discovery ship that they unveiled, like what was it? I don't know, two or three weeks ago or whatever. Due to the registration number, they think that they pinpointed where the uh, star date of the show is well, going to be. Well, they would have to. Right. They, would... they think that it, uh, based on the registration number, that it is happening before the original series. Whoa. Like sometime between Enterprise and the original series. That makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense, and I think it's 100% wrong, but this theory has been like published on every single like Star Trek you can't have website a... that I've I seen. I thought Enterprise was like the first warp like ship made for tra- like exploration or something. No, that's not... That's not totally true. Not um, totally. Well, no, I mean, because there was, was there was ship. Enterprise, is which this, was the NX this, class. Discovery one. is not an Enterprise class ship. What is it? It's a. I think it, I have no idea it's what a the Discovery class. It ship. might just be a Discovery class ship. I mean, the uh, Defiant was a Defiant class ship, wasn't it? Yeah, but that's a new ship. I'm just saying. So hmm. is Voyager's a new but, ship. Uh, the reason that I am 99% sure that that is wrong and that the series is actually taking place between uh, the last original series movie and Next Generation is because in the last movie there is a ship patrolling the neutral zone that has a lower registration number. Oh. So I don't think it is this has... Like randomly it's going to be that ship? I don't think it has anything to do with 
the have, registration. Have you seen number. images of it, of it yet? Of the, the ship? ship? Yeah. Yeah, you haven't seen it? No, uh, whatever. It, it kind of looks like you guys like discussed to, this last episode. I like to be surprised when I when I first it, watch it. It kind of looks like a like a Klingon, Klingon you, you ship. You can or clearly something. see the way that ships progress over the timeline, and you should be able to just by looking at it see how streamlined. Or I mean, you don't really need to be streamlined in space, but the, just the saucer. Shape of it. Okay, the saucer section of it looks like almost like a next generation saucer, Got it. but the bottom of it is kind of like there's a lot of lines, and it looks kind of like. Kind of like a Klingon ship. Almost. Could it be something where it's like a joint venture? Like you have a Klingon and human crew. It, it might be because the that would be pretty cool. The Kittimer Accords happened. That would explain why the registration might be different. Suit, like before this happened, so maybe it maybe it has something to do with it. But I don't I don't think that that's the case because. Or it could just be new in the timeline, and it's just a joint venture ship. Because after DS Nine, yeah, Klingon. I, I really happens. don't think that it's pre original series. Because I, I think that's kind of a stupid time period to to set a show. The ship would look like garbage if it did. <laughs> well, I mean, the ship doesn't look fantastic. Well, then I don't want to watch it. <laughs> Give me one or the other. Damn it! I so, can't believe you didn't watch that. The, the, the next mm-hmm. the next le- leg of my journey is uh, is talking about Camp Fangirl in Tucson, Arizona. But since since we've had a couple of things come up, like let's let's tackle some other subjects before we get off to that. Um, before we literally get off to it. <laughs> oh, oh uh, um, I'm getting off to these pictures. Oh, of Jess, whoa, Jess whoa. first let's let's address <laughs> the shirt you're wearing right now. It's it's the the Summer Games, but what you're wearing oh, is yes. not exactly a Summer Games shirt. Exactly. It's uh, a Quidditch Shutter Summer Game shirt. I can't actually see if I'm showing it because the video is lagging for me. But it's a Team yeah. <laughs> USA Quidditch shirt. Yeah. Team but, USA Quidditch. Yeah. True story. Now, um, <laughs> there's been some Harry Potter stuff that ha- has happened lately. There's a new book, sort of. Yes. Yes. There is a new book, sort of, which I have here because I'm reading it for the second time. Uh, is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So do they have Quidditch in the Summer Games now? <laughs> Like in Brazil, because yes, I, I feel there's, you've been around. reading a lot about you know just Brazil just has this toxic water that swimmers don't want to swim through, they don't want to boat through, and, and stuff like doing, that. And yet they're doing it. But I feel like moment. you know Quidditch. How, how is the air quality there? You know, I can promise you, do, do the Quidditch <laughs> athletes are they getting treated okay? Flying through the smog or whatever. Well, as long as they're not you know juicing or splooshing or moosing for that matter, they're probably you know it's okay. Or drinking Phoenix. I think stairs. they can magic away the smog too, have like a nice dome of of you know clean air protection. I think the back they don't of have some sort of clean ignites. water spell. You got all these wizards down well, there, and they won't them. clean up you, the you water. Can't, you can't do it for the muggles. They only know Oculus the Repairs. That's the only spell I know. <laughs> <laughs> they do, or you do. That's the only spell I've ever seen in the movies. That and Patron. <laughs> so everyone's, that like a... getting, everyone's getting drunk at the Olympics. <laughs> hey man, what's your best spell? Patron, bro. <laughs> Watch this Patron. <laughs> Mine's gold. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Man, you got that silver Patron? I don't know. Yeah, so, like so my you, daddy. So you got some sort of book or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a book. It's a script. It's about how they make Patron. It's a script? It is. It is literally. It's a fact. Yeah. So it's... um, So somebody wrote down their screenplay? (laughs) Yeah. Well, no, not even. It's a stage play. Right now in London at the Palace Theater, there is a play Mm -hmm. that's set um, 19 years after um, the main story ends as Harry Potter and Hermione and all of them as adults and their kids going off to Hogwarts and And having their own kind of... Albus Dumbledore yeah, makes snipe, Miss Snipey Albus, Albus makes Snape. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Albus makes Snape, yes. <laughs> That's a great um, name. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, so then they released the, uh, the actual script from the the play, um, which I think is actually quite good, but I'm pretty biased because I like Harry Potter quite a lot. Um, but it's actually it's really interesting to kind of see the dynamic explored of how um, Harry and his family like deal with like this fame that he had, and 19 years later, how the kids feel pressured to be amazing, and because uh, their dad defeated the greatest dark wizard of all time. Um, I still so it's don't actually know how. it's pretty. Yeah, <laughs> nobody knows how. It's just an accident. Harry sure doesn't and... do any magic ever. <laughs> <laughs> he lucks out. He lucks out quite a bit. What a bitch. I don't know much about Harry. He, Harry, he can't Harry even Potts. repair a pair of glasses. Let me tell you that much. He's a sport. He's a jock. He's a sports star who inherited. It's true. His character yeah. from his parents, and that's it. And he's a jock. 
That's literally, it's about, a, it's a jock story of, of staying at the top <laughs> and being better than everyone for no reason because he has no fucking skills or talents of his own. He inherited everything and he's a jock. That is the story of Harry Potter in a nutshell. If I told you that before watching Harry Potter, what would you think? You'd be like, oh, I love watching stories about jocks rise to the top. And I probably wouldn't jocks. want to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> with, anyway, with sorry. That, with that I'm glowing sorry. review, I wouldn't probably want to I'm watch sorry. it. That's my review on Rotten Tomatoes. Anyway, <laughs> please continue. I'm sorry for interrupting. We should ban it. Ban that Rotten Tomatoes because of those bad reviews. I gave Rotten Tomatoes a bad review. Anyway. <laughs> on Yelp. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. Keep, continue. Uh, no, it's it's good. Uh, no, so I mean that's that's really about it. So the the stage play came out. Uh, Fan reviews are mixed because most people are, or a lot of people are like, no, this isn't a novel. It's bullshit. I don't that's want to exactly read this. Like. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, but I people? actually think it was really good. Um, but I might. I'm also used to to reading plays because I was a theater geek in high school. Um, but I find the format really good, and I'd love to go see the Wait, play. Wait, so it reads it exactly like out. a play? Like, there's all the character names? Yeah, just so kind of like one um, after like another? Like, right, here's the like line. stage right or something. There's no, like, there's no stage directions, which is usually not enough, but it's, Lights yeah, I don't dim. know if you can actually read it if it, but. Oh, oh God. can you read the whole book like this? That, Ministry of that Magic. That looks awful. Who's Hermie One? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Hermie One's office? Was there, is there a Hermie Two? <laughs> we're not even seeing a Hermie One office. Who the fuck is Hermie One? Hermione. Hermione oh, Granger. is that how you spell it? Oh, Hermione. Dude, that shit spelled Hermie One. That's not even a real name. <laughs> Hermione. Nobody spells it. So I got confused because there's a point where they go uh, back in time and there's like a young Hermione. And I was like, is that, what did they literally <laughs> name it Hermie 1? This is my car, the Hermie, Hermie 1. <laughs> Get in. Her- Hermie the love bug. It's a flying car, <laughs> yeah. Hermie 1. When they went back in time, it was Hermie 1 point, or so, Hermie point 0.5 maybe? It was Alpha. So, I don't know. Something that's interesting to me is last year, late last year, we had an episode, episode 239 called Truly Outlandish, where we talked about <laughs> the cursed child and its impending release and so on. And then also... A, uh, a a star that had some unusual activity around it that that people did suggest was maybe signs of an alien constructed Dyson sphere because it was it was flickering like people could do we have new data on that we have new data on this is it crazy do you... oh please tell it's... yeah I didn't read this yet so yeah, I don't enlighten know us yeah. so the star is formally <laughs> called KIC uh eight four six two eight five two but it's now been named tabby star after the initial study lead of, of uh, the, the initial studies lead author tabitha uh Boyajian. um so this thing's been flickering it's been like the flickering suggests that there's maybe objects blocking it yeah um and and they when last we discussed this they mentioned that they needed to clock some time at a um observatory so they could really you know get a good long look at this object it's been a while um, they actually, I didn't know about this, they did a Kickstarter to, to buy that time at, the, at an observatory. Which is funny, because it's a KIC star, so it's Kickstarter. Okay. <laughs> Kickstar. <laughs> they got uh, 1,762 backers pledge $107,000 plus um, to observe the star for a full year. Um, but that hasn't even started yet. Whoa, so did they make contact with the Tibithians? <laughs> <laughs> Which is what they're going to be calling it. Um, <laughs> that's pretty great. It's like kind of like a bridge to Terabithia, kind of like. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, so Caltech astronomer Ben uh, Montet and Joshua Simon of the Carnegie Institute created a photometric analysis of the star and discovered its light output occasionally dips by up to 20% with its total stellar flux diminished continuously over the course of four years. So it, this, this star, it's not just flickering, it's actually getting dimmer. It turn, it's just dust. And it's, it's been, space it's been dust. dipping by as much as 3% in four years. And another researcher used older data to discover that, it, provided that the recordings are correct, it's been doing this since the 19th century, and over the past 100 years, it's dimmed 19%. That's actually way too fast for a cosmic event. No other stars are doing this. That's no way one's too ever fast seen anything like it before. It started, stars dim over periods of like thousands, if not millions. Of years. It doesn't just happen in like a hundred years. So somebody's building like a giant, like sunglasses in front of it. Star Killer Base. <laughs> oh God! By the time we see it, it's too late. Great. And it's like it's like the Death Star, but bigger. Sorry. Uh, Montet said. Um, the part that really surprised me was just how rapid and non-linear the dips were. We spent a long time trying to convince ourselves this wasn't real. We just weren't able to. 
Um, no one knows what it means. So wait, that's all the new info we have. You just made it harder for me to sleep at night. I still don't know what it is. <laughs> it could be a swarm of cometary fragments. It could, could be, be a swarm of bees. The, the effect of a distortion. Bees. It could be space bees space like out bee. the oh, ass. Bees. <laughs> oh um, God, it's gonna be the, like Ender's Game. The effect of a distorted star. It could be the remnants of a shattered planet, obscuring it. Oh, just like hanging out. Yeah, just hanging. Just floating. a really big planet. Um, because of all the debris that would have to. Wait, be so. So some of the theories are there there could just be shit that's floating in front of it. Yeah, but that doesn't really explain why it's dimmer other than that, well, the, it, than that it's yeah. like there's there's objects that are clustering in a way that in in its orbit perpetually is making it less light come to us from and, the angle we're And seeing typically it. destroyed objects in other solar systems they at the point we're seeing them they're going to be in an orbit. It's not going to be random dim it's going to be over millions of years be forming an orbit and the star sure. looks like it's dimming. It's not a new star. So, so they could be building a halo around it, right? And it's just getting a little bit wider. Yeah, it's it's weird. Uh, they said certain things can't explain long term dimming, while others can explain short term flickering. But as Montet put it, nothing nicely explains everything. I think what we're seeing actually is we're we're somehow lined up perfectly that we're staring directly into the dead center of a black hole and seeing our future star it's us doing that in the future <laughs> because we're it's like because you can't actually see a black hole it's really hard uh, i guess with infrared but unless there's debris if you're see, if you're seeing it dead on it's going to be impossible to see why did people think that it was a dyson sphere because it doesn't sound anything there's like there's a one. huge structure that's so big it's it's impossible to exist around that type of star if you have a planet that but a, big it but would a not dyson exist. sphere is supposed to like harness all of the energy of the sun like it's well, it doesn't, we it's wouldn't not, no, we wouldn't see anything well there's two things with that one they said well would, it was not a non-completed dyson sphere oh okay and two there's also something called i think it's like a dyson i forget the name it's like a dyson mesh where they're connected but they're just gaping it's like a chain link fence where there's just giant gaping holes <laughs> giant gaping holes all over and it still collects mm. it's a more efficient way of a dyson sphere actually so I, well be in that it didn't have Take as it doesn't much need to be 100 a sphere. You it didn't take as much material to make it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. I guess details yeah. as they come, but fortunately, fortunately, they got a hundred thousand dollars to observe the star for a full year. That's so that's much. that's not much. And I mean, like, I didn't know about it. It wasn't promoted very well because otherwise, yeah, I, I would I would have contributed. It only had uh, it only had just beneath two thousand. You know, this is something that the governments of the world should invest in, just well, to know if there's a, like an incoming threat yeah. in the next couple thousand years that it takes to get here. Yeah, well, they're they're real organized, so it's really shocking that they didn't, you know, <laughs> put some effort in, in over there. Um, and they get along so well. Yeah, yeah, they really do. They're having a good time. You want to talk about some crazy shit on the Earth? Yeah, what you, what you got? There's All right, so I, I thought this was really cool, even though it's a horrible death and destruction thing, but it's really cool. So <laughs> you know about the like the naturally occurring anthrax plagues that are happening in, yeah in yeah Russia? because because the uh, uh yeah. the, the 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 permafrost is melting due to global warming or maybe mm -hmm. it's not well, it's, a, it's a heat wave and, and they were saying the it's it's basically up near the, the Siberia, arctic right? circle and that it's actually heating up 10 times faster than the rest of the world so there's a layer of permafrost there that's over a thousand feet deep which is basically the empire state building and they're saying it's a giant tomb of bacteria and diseases and right now at the top you have uh reindeer they exist apparently who knew um <laughs> <laughs> you have you have reindeer that died about like a, 75 to 100 years ago at least there was at least one and it it was they can't bury through the permafrost it's really hard so it's at the top layer melted and the anthrax infected 2000 reindeer and then started infecting people so there there's only like one as far as i knew there's only one person that died from it it, been it was, it was dead reindeer from a prior plague that was frozen over again and then released and the problem with that is they're saying not only that but around the world um, even in alaska and other places in the arctic circle there is the i think 19 i wrote it down but it's like the 1918 or the 1912 spanish flu that killed like 4 million people is buried in there uh, the bubonic plague is buried in there and smallpox is buried in there and these are oh, wait, all how do they know that because they're they're basing it on where people were buried did they before. take like a core sample and well permafrost is really hard that would be tough but probably no they, mm -hmm. they know based on when people died and where they were buried um, and what has frozen over what what would be there and what animals were infected where there are grave sites buried under permafrost from back then for people who died from the bubonic plague and if they thaw enough which it is thawing every summer. There's a massive heat wave now in the Arctic Circle. Are there any of these uh, there's no defense diseases that wouldn't be able to survive? Because I, I know some things no, th can't those survive ones I freezing. Just, yeah. Those ones I just, survive, uh, just talked about would survive for thousands upon thousands of years. Okay. Permafrost is basically just like freezing them in time. There's, there's some viruses and things that wouldn't, but there's a lot of bacteria that would just 
It, they're like those water, they're like water bears. They go to sleep, and then in a bazillion years, they wake up, and they're perfectly fine. So, so then how did the bubonic plague like go away in the first place? It killed. It, it, for it killed like the fifty percent of people it needed, and then it just ran its course. It just didn't. Some people just it didn't kill them, and it, it went away. They killed a lot of people. They buried them. They burned their bodies. That's it. There was no cure. They just it killed a control. lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> so it was genetic markers that made people get bubonic plague? Like what? Or was it like an evolutionary thing where like now we would be immune to it? I think yeah. It just didn't. I I don't think there's been enough time that we'd be immune to it. You think because we're descendants of the people that survived? Like, yeah, the people that survived. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, because a lot of people survived not because they were immune, but because they weren't anywhere. They were quarantined. Oh, and they like, weren't in the area. They started like see, yeah. like leper colonies, like putting people aside and like burning bodies. Well, the they, important yeah. thing is not to get any vaccines because we don't want aut- autism. Actually, burning bodies was the yeah. worst. Maybe right. maybe we'll yes. unfreeze some leper colonies. Leprechaunalies. It didn't work. Sorry, it was something about leprechauns, and I don't know. Well, you've I, got I, leprosy wandering right around your house. You know that, right? Because of armadillos. Yeah, armadillo. Um, I just, I just wanted to make a joke about leprechauns, and it, 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 just, it just horribly <laughs> okay. bombed. I've that's got, all. I've got one more, even because, more exciting news thing. Yeah, that's why. About. That's why we don't see them. They're under the. They're under the permafrost. They're. 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 Yeah. They're gonna be yeah. really pissed when it melts down to their. Just. House. A, just a PSA. Don't go around licking armadillos. Or permafrost. Or permafrost. Or dead rain. Did you see the video of somewhere in Siberia where they had like some permafrost that was melting, and then there's like all this gas that was underneath of the. That's the bubonic plague. Don't go near it. What are you <laughs> no, doing? No, but like the 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 surface of the uh, the ground looked like a waterbed or something. It was just like wobbling around like unnaturally. The scientist just went over and like hit it with his foot, and the whole ground just started it's jiggling like Jello. That's when you're like, get the fuck off the ice. You don't want to. It wasn't ice. It was. Just the, it the was ground. And the ground. Yeah, it was just like so grass that was just acting like a like a waterbed or something. It was just grass crazy. Has been frozen for like a thousand years. Well, well they said they thought it was because of like gas, infection. not not necessarily <laughs> liquid. That's so weird. You want to talk about something more exciting for just a minute? Because I'm really sure. This one's even more exciting. You guys hear about the the chimera cells? They finally lifted a ban on. I have not. Wait, okay. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? I mean, because like, I know, I know, you know, when you, okay, take, let me when you, when you combine <clears throat> a hammerhead shark with a kangaroo, that's a chimera. Yeah. What do you do when you combine an animal with a human? Exactly. Nina. Now, here's what's happened. There's been, there's always, there's been a ban, at least recently, I don't know, for mixing human stem cells with animal embryos because. Yeah, um, we talked about this. It was, um, yeah. Uh, I forget what the episode was called, but we, we talked about how there was, there was opposition. People were saying, well, what happens if they get human consciousness? Well, and guess what? the island of Dr. Moreau. Guess what? The scientists won because they lifted the ban. Cool. So now they can use stem cells and put them into animal embryos and have them, you know, birth, be birthed naturally with some some human DNA. Now, the reason for this, if, I don't know if people remember, was because it's really hard to test vaccines and, and drugs and things on animals to help people because they don't quite have the same genetics, quite have the same, same DNA. So they're trying to put more human DNA in like lab rats and pigs and things so they can do better, uh, more accurate testing, which which I guess is good for people. Also, they're saying they could use it to grow like human hearts, kidneys, livers in pigs and things like that. So, you know, if you know everyone that's going to be dying from liver disease or heart disease and needs a transplant, there won't be a waiting period anymore. Right. Like they can grow this. It probably be still crazy expensive. However, here's the best part of this. Here's some of the first off, they're not allowed to do this in chimps and monkeys because it said they said it'll do hor- it'll make that they're too closely related. It'll make them too smart. <laughs> and here's here's yeah. Planet of the so Apes. Here's some of the worries. Um so they're worried that the human stem cells may give the animals, um, on accident, it can grow into all the parts of them, so it may give them human consciousness and intelligence. <laughs> That's amazing! So we can make Or you a might get a dog. rat or something that just grows a human dick. Or they'll just die and melt. <laughs> just- yeah. Could you imagine all of New York is infested with rats with human-sized dicks? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> that is actually the other part of it. They're saying it could alter their sperm and eggs so they can actually have human DNA and mate with other animals and make hybrids that we couldn't stop from going out of control. Like hybrid human animals. They'd be, you'd even be able to breed with them, Boar, because they'd have human sperm and eggs. Oh, goody. Isn't that great? Um, so I, thought I like that how was, specifically I came. I thought that that was amazing. <laughs> the, the article I was writing and even the interview I heard was like, well, what are you going to do if, if an animal gets too intelligent? Like, oh, we'll, we'll know what to do. When we, like, well, we've got measures Wink. in place. Yeah, Jurassic Park I think we're only too. a few years away from having cat girls. Yeah. Woo! Sorry, that's mm-hmm. probably wrong. Mm-hmm. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I thought that was really cool that we've had this ability to put human stem cells in animals this whole time and make them smarter and we're not doing it. That's amazing. 
I want cats to run up to me and actually speak their mind like, I fucking hate you, but I want food. Meow. I'm like, great. <laughs> thank you. Get a job, cat. I don't have opposable thumbs. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Why did you make me human master? Get out of here. No, I, I'm, I, I've, actually, I've, I've actually been working on, on a science fiction story pertaining to the boosting of, of like consciousness of what would normally be pet animals and how it actually benefits human society. So this is this is thrilling for me. I'm, I'm really I know this can go horribly wrong, but I'm thrilled. I hope with the it goes horribly wrong. I want that dystopian future where there's crazy animal dog mutants the size of men. Trying We're going to be living over. in BoJack Horseman land. Yeah, that would be awesome. Or it's just going to be Hollywood. Well, everywhere. And, 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 and furry culture has helped us get to the point where we can we can just accept this as the status quo. So I'm sure, I'm sure there's a lot of people yep, in America that would definitely accept animals as a status quo hey aren't you that horse from horsing around <laughs> <laughs> well, yes i am uh, all right so <laughs> this is we're actually we're actually over time at this point so i think maybe maybe i should save my camp fan gamer story for another day or uh something well, how long is it i, I don't know i got it's a discussion you know it's it's, it's, it's it could be a it could be a lengthy discussion well knowing it you be. it's probably 45 minutes well it's kind of it's kind of me telling you all, i mean here, here's the reality of it though Uh-oh. is that i am just like i did last year doing an article about the experience. Oh, okay. So it's going to be a huge, so a huge, huge. So article. you could it'll record be, that and be a huge article. article. Well, no, I mean, like, I, I, we don't have to talk about it now. We can talk about it later. We may be able to talk about it next next episode that we do. You know, in the style in our every other week news. I don't show. I, I, I do really want to hear about it, but I don't want to condense it down either. So yeah, so maybe we shouldn't. But but there will. I don't know when the article is going to come out. It actually took me quite a while to write the last one. So so I don't know. But let me show some 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 things I got there really quickly. Um, they gave us a bag of, of cool stuff, and I'll be showing all the cool stuff that they gave out. Um, I'm sorry, in the audio, article, audio. People. Um, we, well, you can you can just, you can react to this. We have a, I have a frog, and inside the frog are uh, are some wooden nickels. These are these are dragon points. Is this a Naruto change purse? I don't think so. Okay, um, it's in, a frog. The, the 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 event was themed around Mother Three, and in Mother Three, you do all your saving and banking and such through frogs and dragon points. Um, so they had dragon points that the. the 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 convention actually had its own designated currency that you had to trade and do other things and play a stock market to get more of. Did you actually have to use it at the vendors? Yeah, some of them. Oh, Jesus. Like, I'm so poor, I have no dragon coins. All I have are these $100 bills. Please give me a soda for a $100 bill. La- last year we got a magnificent uh, camp neckerchief, and this year was no exception. One covered in awesome Mr. Saturns doing cool stuff. Them's gang colors. <laughs> You don't wear those colors. And uh, here. and of course there was the highlight of it, the first and last issue of Video Gamely magazine, the corporate <laughs> sponsor of Camp Fan Gamer, also sponsored by Gamer Blood. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> the uh, I love being strong. Gamer Blood comes in wonderful flavors like tactical rhubarb, um, and uh, it's a whole it's a whole magazine of uh, of, of different ads and so on and, and uh, articles about the uh, the event. Eight things we all hate about Mother Three. I mean, come on. Uh, <laughs> It's just it's terrible real estate values. Mother Three makes Nowhere Island seem like a really great place to invest in real estate, but then somebody told us the only thing holding it to the surface of the earth is a bunch of needles. Good luck selling that at a timeshare pitch. <laughs> this is the weirdest. Or articles in the, the hottest games of the fiscal third quarter. For example, the world of Gex. The side splitting, <laughs> fast talking Gecko is back in World of Gex, the revolutionary online multiplayer game that takes the beloved Gex franchise to a whole new level. Team up with friends from all over the internet to eat bugs, collect remote controls, and dish out the funniest one liners you'll hear on, in any online game, courtesy of comedian Dana Carvey. Laugh along with thousands <laughs> of other players as you lampoon your way through pop culture laden levels, such as the Parent Trap level, and make sure to beg your parents for a high speed internet connection before World of Gex hits the store shelves this Christmas. Do you know what's really funny? <laughs> if you replaced Gex with Disney Interactive, it's the same fucking thing. You mean, you mean just, um, or whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, Infinity? Is. Yeah, that fucking thing. Or, or Tetris 3 Murder Fest. First off, can I say it's about time? After 23 years in development, some people might be wondering why a game about aligning falling blocks needed a sequel, much less a third installment. Well, let me put your doubts to rest. The expansion to the Tetraverse's lore is truly compelling, movingly told, and not at all what you might expect. A masterpiece in every possible way. Nine stars. My only spoiler is this. You'll be falling into line all right. Or else, <laughs> you know that would be way funnier if they didn't already have a movie coming out for Tetris. I think this was written before that announcement. But this one have, uses have the look, Unreal Engine. Have a look at the graphic, Brandon. Have a look at the graphic for Tetris Three. Oh, I'm looking at ultra rad high score with this kid with the dyed hair and a lion on a missile coming out of the ocean. But where where am I looking? The top left. Yeah, t- Tetris. There's, it's just knives. <laughs> it's just it's not Tetris pieces. It's, it's a bunch knives, of knives and guns. And guns. <laughs> there you go, boy. Uh, anyway, so. 
it's uh, it was it was a really good time. Um, hopefully, y'all get a chance to talk about it in the next episode. I'm sorry for cutting it short. Um, it there's there's a lot to talk about. It was a, an adventure and a very different adventure from last year. Jeff Benson, the guy who's the brains behind Camp Fangamer, compared um, the previous year's Camp Fangamer to Woodstock, and this year is Burning Man. Um, Burning Man. <laughs> Weekend at Burning Man? Weekend at Burning Man. Um, I love that. If Did they curious, have free health care? <laughs> if you're curious what Camp Fangamer is all about, I'll link you to last year's um, article on, on the subject and just tell you that this year was very, very different, but just as cool. Can we have a Camp Dark Souls? <laughs> I want a town devoted to Dark Souls for a bit. So um, that would be uh, brutal. Brandon, that would be very brutal. Or, if you want to put that together, that um, maybe I think maybe it's called, called. I think it's actually called Detroit, <laughs> but I've never been there. And I that's, don't know. That's the RoboCop experience. Um, <laughs> oh my god, they should they should do that in Detroit. It bring it will bring people back. Yeah, I went to Detroit and I was really upset that they never built that uh, the RoboCop statue. Yeah, because then I didn't have anything to go look at because I thought Detroit's there was a kind of Kickstarter and it was know. like one. No, no, it, it, there, it's still it's still be. in production. I've seen the. the it's been like stuff. ten years. It's it's. It's very hard to get projects like this off the ground, but I've seen the molds. They're ready to go. Like it's all it's all coming together. It's just taking a long time. I guess I could have went to see that. Who's paying that for this? Like it can't be the city of Detroit. No, it was like no, a like Kickstarter. Kickstarter, and the, I oh. think the mayor was like, "We'll do it if it you know gets enough," and it did. I thought I thought they rejected it, and then like they had to fight about it for a while. You're thinking of Bodie McBoatface, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which even though it won in a fair democracy, they threw out, and I call a big fuck you over there in Europe to throwing away democracy. Not they like, ended up, not like, not like, like we're doing that. Or anything. They ended up naming uh, one of the, the the smaller boats the escape boats. Yeah, on, a fucking on escape the boat isn't the same as a yeah. fucking high tech military research vessel, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Jess, you have a story that pertains to this, don't you? <laughs> oh no, I no, I was just saying it, the same thing happened at my office. We were, we had new conference rooms, and they put in like democracy, like vote for vote for the conference room names, and we said Roomy McRoom face and. It won, and they said, no, nope, we can't name it. What's the point of democracy and voting if no one's going to agree to the vote? Well, this is just like the, the first Transformers movie. They said, what do you want Optimus Prime to say? And the winning thing was do a barrel roll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he didn't say it. What's the point of war, like living? <laughs> Man, screw this world. I hope the chimera. It, it happens. I hope the chimera animals come and fuck shit up for everyone. Most of the time, Reddit gets together and like swarms people on to Hacks things like that. Accounts. Like They never end up going with it because it's always something fun. So stupid. Too awesome for school. Anyhow. I wish Optimus said that. This contest wasn't <laughs> supposed to be fun. We were supposed to come up with a regular, <laughs> normal name that people like. There's Dude. jets in um, Transformers. Why can't they just say, do a barrel roll or anything? It could have totally worked. Instead, they went with some speech that was on Optimus's box for his original toy, I think. <sighs> or Shia LaBeouf dodging anyway, lasers. lasers. It was, and he's like, I mean, it, roll. it wouldn't have saved the film. It was still a shit film. So there's that. I would have seen it for him to say that one line. He would have gotten my money. So thank you for not putting in there because now you didn't get my money. <laughs> and you never will. Well, then you didn't see the awesome uh, scene where an, I sure did an, an Xbox and a Mountain Dew soda machine on the streets of Los Angeles turned into Transformers. Was that when the two racist Transformers were talking? That no. was the second movie. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> anyhow, thanks so much for, for watching this. Remember, nerdyshow.com slash support is where you can jump in and help support Nerdy Show. And uh, there's also our store where you can get rad t-shirts um, and also stickers. Nerdy Show logo stickers, Dungeons & Doritos stickers. They're a dollar. Get them for a dollar. That's that's like nothing. Just get them. Do the thing. Put it on your car and trapper keeper. And your mom's face while she's asleep and be like, ha ha, mom, I pranked you. And it only cost a dollar to prank you. So what a great deal, <laughs> mom. And I know, yeah, you, someone, I know you, you do realize that someone is going to put that sticker. They're going to try to put it on their mom when she's asleep. And she's going to have like a 44 next to her pillow. And then she's going to just wake up and shoot whoever's touching her. And then you're going to die. Well, we don't recommend Americans trying this then. Yeah. Don't do this in America. You'll get Especially shot. Especially Florida. Even by your own parents, you'll be murdered. Yeah. But Australia, you're good. They don't even have guns. Yeah. Well, maybe one of our British fans could try that out. Unless your mom is a snake. I don't know how Australia works. Thanks for watching this video of Nerdy Show. Lick and subscribe. I wish I had my mask on for this. Oh, you, you went for the camera. I'm just doing the mic. Not too, it's not too late. Lick and subscribe. Lick and subscribe. And if you like what you taste, please lick and subscribe. <laughs> if you if want, you'd like to have us in your mouth, please lick and subscribe. If you want more videos from Nerdy Show, you want to subscribe. If you want more podcasts from Nerdy Show that aren't just this show, you want to go to Nerdy Show 
dot com. That's going to require going up into the address bar uh, over that way and typing in no. nerdyshow dot com. You can put a link you could, right you here. You could also control T and do it in a new and, tab, or you can click it. We'll put it down below. <laughs> click, click also, the button. Also, hit Alt F four because that'll just open it, it instantly. That'll open Nerdy Show. No, that's on a cheat code in your favorite you, video game. If you hit Alt F four, it'll open Nerdy no, Show. No, that's a just, cheat code if, for your video just game. Just hit Alt F four. If you had a fat stack of Bitcoin, where would you spend it? <laughs> On Alt F4. I think she froze. She froze. We lost her. Oh, no, she's back. Oh. <laughs> no, wait, I was like, I just all of a sudden got a... <laughs> Guys, I think my video stream wait, is wait, also... Oh, shit, Brandon froze. Guys, we need more Bitcoin. We actually I think we... that it's freezing. We don't ex- we don't accept Bitcoin, <laughs> but like you could maybe turn Bitcoin into PayPal. I don't know how it works. Go to nerdyshow.com slash support and, and make sure that more of this, more of this happens. Ing. <laughs> Thanks, Sorry, bye. Sorry, frozen. <laughs> See ya.